and you spent two, three years of your life with this person, because and you still, let me get it all, Terrell, you still don't feel comfortable enough. You ever thought about that? You don't feel comfortable enough. <laughs> And I can't even say this shit. Y'all make me uncomfortable. Comfortable. It's 56, you dumb nigga. Oh, they can't hear this, can they? <laughs> These rickety ass chairs you got. Man, you got me blaming me. <laughs> Yo, 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 it's the Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 156. Turn up, happy Friday. Yes, Welcome sir. back. Uh, hopefully everybody's feeling in a good mood. Everybody's feeling the vibes. Happy Friday. We still in Gemini season. Mm -hmm. Wrapping that up. Turn up. What's up, real? Father's Day weekend was just. Father's Day first weekend Father's was just. Day. First. Yeah, no, yeah. My bad. I was just on and out. Um, it's on and out in the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> the type of scissors that make. Because Terrence put dirt. Dirt even want, want me to be, be on some positive shit. <laughs> That's the only part of the song that I ever hear. He skips that. I skip it too. I'm not going to lie. I love my guy Cole, but I just don't want to hear the all my life joint. I don't want to hear it. I'm sorry. This is the most random way to start. Father's Day. That's a Father's Day song, ain't it? That's on the Father's Day playlist. <laughs> I guess you could say that. <laughs> Father's Day was this past weekend. It was your boy's first. And honestly, it was very, I would say, it's humbling because... I was telling everybody basically that you don't feel the, like this is my first father. I've been a father for at this point, what is it? 15, 16 days. So, oh, yeah, you still fresh in the game. You still got to get your. I was getting ready to say it doesn't, for me, it don't feel like the weight of when people say, hey, man, happy Father's Day. Man, you, you know what? It's crazy. People, people have said you, you're doing what you got to do to raise the next generation of children, making yeah. a sacrifice. And I'm like, if I was. Three or four years in, or maybe even a full year in, then I would feel the gratitude behind it. But now I just kind of feel like grateful to even be told. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I put in a bunch of work and it's like, man, we celebrating all the work you've done as a father yet. You know what I'm saying? Because it's still yet, so bro. early. Not yet. It's but still something to be super proud of, though. It, it is, though. It is. Yeah. It is. And we didn't do much, y'all. We just chilled. We went to Terrell's crib. Nah, yeah, That was great. With this guy. That it was, was great. Uh, dad was there. It was, it was great for him. He said it was one of the best Father's Day for him. I know it was transformative for my dad because he's a first-time granddad, too. So it was his first Father's Day where he was a granddad. So, mm -hmm. you know, special shit happening, you know? Life. Oh, yeah. Life is Hey, child. look, shout-out to everybody who spent Father's Day with their dad. And then special shout-out to those who might have a dad that might be battling illness or you lost your dad. I know that, that weekend was probably tough. My heart goes shout out to y'all. And look, that's why y'all got us. I say this every time. That's why y'all got us. Yeah, some so bros. Just finna lock in. Just to kind of start off on the most current <laughs> event news. You know, Titanic is one of my favorite movies I ever watched. Yeah. <laughs> Titanic is a movie. Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo Kate Winslet, Cameron, and Kate Winslet, James Cameron came together and made a cult class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I guess the Titanic is still holding that hype that it had years ago when it first came out and sunk. Because you still have rich white people that are putting their money together and going and trying to see this. And going and trying to find that joint. And I know y'all all saw that tweet where everybody was talking about how deep the ocean was. Did you see that? It was like an animation where it was like, this is... Oh, when they said this is where the Titanic is? Yeah. Yeah. Shit was crazy. So, very briefly for those who might not be super informed about what happened with the Titanic, but basically... Five wealthy tourists, I'm going to give y'all what it is, a British billionaire, one of Pakistan's richest men and his son. There was a French, a famed French explorer, and then there was the CEO of the whole shebang. Oh, shit. Five people went on this little ass, this little ass, uh, it's called a submersive. This is not a submarine. Okay, yeah. And people think it's a submarine, but it's called a submersive. And believe it or not, the difference is, because I had to look this up, the difference is a submarine can go around like it wants. Like a submarine can do whatever the fuck it wants. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not a submersive, y'all. It's a submersible. Submersible. I hate when I say the wrong words. You were submersive. You know what? This whole, this whole conversation is submersive. That's a good <laughs> word to use. 
Let right? Me, let me see what it actually means. Go ahead. A submersible is just like a submarine. It just has to be controlled by like a ship that like is above or at the surface. Like it's like a remote control job. Not remote control because they can do their own thing. And look, I'm not no aquatic uh, diver. So don't, don't fact check me too crazy. But that is the difference between a submarine and a, su a submersible, y'all. A submersible has to be controlled by the mothership. And what happened is that mug went down that joint and lost connection with the ship at the surface. Bro, this is another uh -huh. thing. That joint can, they do not have uh, GPS down there. The Titanic is apparently 13,000 feet at the ocean floor. They said it takes two hours to go from the top all the way down to the bottom. Two hours to get down. I thought it was only 4,000. 13,000 feet. What, what, what's, your, what's your uh, fact check? Because I got my facts here. No, you got it. 13,000 feet. So this is my thing. It's going to take you a grip to get down there. The only way that they're able to move around down there is the ship at the surface has to be like, go left 200 yards and turn right. And it's going to be right there. But they can't see shit. They just down there in the dark. That's terrifying. It's crazy. And just to give y'all some a little bit more insight, it was a $250,000 ticket. Which four days insane. worth of oxygen in that joint. I don't know what is so great about the Titanic that I would want to, one, pay that price, and two, you good. Oh, my bad. I don't know what's so great about the, the Titanic that I would want to do that, period. Like, what are you, what are y'all, like, are we going down there to find something and then we all going to invest and it's going to be the next? Like, they had to be after something else other than just a voyage to sea, You're going right? to see one of the, you, you're, going to, you're going to see the most, um, the most what would you call revered sunken ships in history? You know what I'm saying? There's a re and you're going under the water. Like the movie is just enough for me. The ticket is you paying for the risk it also takes that y'all ended up you know succumbing to. You paying for that because you know. Yeah. Honestly, it's crazy. Did, did you you got anything else you want to say about the? Uh, the yeah, that joint mm -hmm. was that joint was called the Titan. Have you ever read, I mean, have you ever heard about the, uh, we've talked about this already. The Titanic was literally made after, it wasn't made after, but there was a book written before the Titanic about a ship that sunk and it was deemed unsinkable. And that joint, I swear the ship was called the Titan. And then that ship in the book sunk. And then like 30 years later, the Titanic came out and it was, and it, and it sunk. This one being called the Titan, the irony in that is just nuts. Nah, that is wild. Crazy. What the fuck? Y'all could have named it anything else. Y'all could have named it anything else. Y'all didn't think bad luck, like, we going to name it too close to the Titanic and then maybe some shit might go wrong? True. did you see the inside of it? Did you see what the dude said? Yes. Did you see how it was ran with a Game Boy controller? The Logitech joint? He said it's Bluetooth. I can hand it to anybody. Why would you do that? <laughs> why is that the case? Why is that? Why is the ease of use that like here? Why do you not have a car like that? And then y'all are billionaires. Y'all trusted this bullshit y'all got. And if I would have gotten, that's the thing. That's why they said there was no black folks. Because we think we, our entire legacy is built on, okay, I need to figure out what the fuck is about to happen. Because you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? We told you shit happening. Yeah. So the modern day black folks. We would have been like, he about to drive this whole... First of all, we would have never gotten this shit to start. We, you can't even get certain, most black folks to snorkel or go on a cruise. How are you supposed to take a shower in here? Or well, shower we're figuring it out. When we get back. All right. I'll see you when you get back. Uh, we, show us the YouTube video. Black folks, we love YouTube. I we have, have not seen a seat in that joint. Whenever you see the inside of that joint, they in the, in the hut. It does. It looks crazy in that yeah. joint. It looks ridiculous. So my thing is this. I just, I just, let's talk about this. This is what they said could have happened, y'all. They said the submarine going down there by all of that Titanic debris could have got snagged or some shit or stuck, right? Mm -hmm. Or in some type of way that could have happened. And if that does happen, that submersible has, they said it has, I think, five different techniques of how to return back to the surface. They even said that there's a tech, there's a there's a technique to return it to the surface if everybody on board is unconscious. So 
That joint is definitely coming back to the surface at some point. They will find it. The Coast Guard right now looking for it. They're not looking in the water. They're not like in the water. Like they're on the surface, but they're really looking like the Coast Guard is looking for them like this because they really just waiting to see it come to the surface. Because they went so deep in the water, the only thing that can be used to like find them is the ship that released them. Oh, they, they, there's nothing else you can. We, we can't go find a submarine. We just gonna have to wait for that motherfucker to show back up. This is the fucked up part. They said if it went down there and it was like a power, let's say it went down there and they had a power issue. If the power goes out, you can't. One, you can't see shit because it's, you're in the, the the ocean. There's not no light source down there. There's barely. A, it's not even no window down there. It's like a little fucking TV that they're watching, right? They, so they down there in the pitch black. You're in the pitch black. Four days of oxygen, and if you lose power, do you know how cold it is down there? It's freezing cold down there. You will arguably, you will freeze. You will freeze. And the pressure down there is nuts. Low key, that is one of my biggest fears. Not yet. I would be terrified if we went two feet underwater. I would be scared. Yeah. If you just said, we, we in this thing and we go a couple feet underwater, I'm like, just take me back up to the top. When I get in the pool, this is back when we was on our Florida shit. When we used to jump in that pool, it was 12 feet. I used to sink all the way to the bottom until my feet hit the floor and then push off and go back up. Even that kind of gave me some anxiety. Niggas that jump in like 18, 20 feet deep pools and just go down, even that's a lot for me. You want to go 13,000 feet? You want to go higher than the, the, than the fucking Mount Everest underwater? Yeah. And it's the thing that I was going to say. Everybody is giving the credit to the Titanic. Everybody's like, oh, the Titanic, I got one more in me. The Titanic didn't do shit. The Titanic already got the ass whooped by the ocean. It's the ocean, bro. The ocean is so fucking scary. I already took out the Titanic. No, but people be dying trying to see the Titanic, though. That's You're true. right. That's true, right, but the, the Titanic got killed, killed by the, by the ocean, ocean, and y'all got killed by the ocean. Okay, you didn't, nah, get, killed right. you didn't get killed by the Titanic. You got killed by the ocean. Like, the ocean is scary as fuck. It like, is. That, and that's the... The shit that I, we don't know. They could have gotten eaten by some fucking big ass something we've never seen. We've only seen 70% of the ocean. We don't know what might have swam over this way where y'all was at and now is down there. You ever heard of Megalodon? Yeah, I've heard of that. That joint could have ate their ass. Do you know how big the Megalodon is? I'm going to put a picture up here. It's that big fish thing, right? Terrence, No. <laughs> the Megalodon. That's a crazy name, the Megalodon. It's the biggest shark ever. That's that big ass. It's the big joint. Okay. It, yeah. damn, how big? This nigga's talking, that's like talking about Bigfoot, though, ain't it? First of all, the Megalodon is real. We went to the, if you go to the Baltimore Aquarium in Baltimore, um, they have the big tooth structure. I got a picture of it in my phone. It's like this. Oh. Uh, well, you can see how big that joint is. But, like, that joint is huge, bro. Look how big it is versus a, uh, a human. You've never seen a shark that big. Imagine, like, a blue whale, but it's a fucking great white. Anyway, this is all conspiracy. How do you feel about the fact that people are just leisurely making jokes about these motherfuckers dying? I think because they rich and billionaires and this was something that y'all was trying, you're going to see people be insensitive about it. If, if When people are unfortunately killed... You see people be way more sensitive around talking about it. We trying to be supportive to the families. We throwing up prayers. When it's something like this, y'all paid $250,000, somebody's whole life earnings. Y'all paid that for a seat and a ticket to go see the Titanic 30, 40 years later. Is it really worth it? Yeah. It's like the person that owns a tiger and then a tiger kills him. You're like, damn, yeah. you had the money to own a tiger. But why would you do that? That was a dumbass idea. Nah, yeah. 100%. And honestly, black, folk, black folks were not allowed. I've said it before in this podcast. We were not allowed on the Titanic. We weren't even allowed to work on the Titanic. We weren't allowed on. We weren't allowed to work at all. So. Damn, y'all. Y'all know black people, we don't fuck with water. You know what I was going to say? We wouldn't have got on that shit. We would have never got on. Mm-mm. Black people, we don't fuck with water, and we don't need to. We don't even need to see people drown in our own life. We see shit on TV. Look, I don't fuck with that water. I seen Ray. 
Yeah. What? What happened to Ray? You know, you I seen see. I'm a star. I'm good. I'm not getting on the boat. What? Nah, yeah. For sure. But low key, we us in water, we don't mix. Nah, yeah. for sure. Honestly, but black folks, it's never too late. Nah, to fuck get, that. We do mix with the water. Nah, fuck that. What I was getting ready to say is it's never too late to get swimming lessons. First of all, you can't take a black Americans, you can't take away our trauma from water. Let's go back to the to the how we got over here. All right, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Okay. Everybody okay. learn how to swim and let's move on. All right, that's what I was getting yeah. ready to say. It's never too late to learn how to swim. And I always said I would never go on a cruise ship, but have you ever seen have you seen the difference between the Titanic, the Titanic and the other cruise? And the cruise ship? It would no iceberg stands a chance. But then again, it's the fucking ocean, bro. Yeah. I know you've seen the videos of people on cruises and shit start sliding. And y'all think they're making the same thing? Like years later, they that's like us thinking that they're making the same type of car now. Like I'm sure the cruise ships now can probably handle some crazy seas. Nah, for sure. You know? Look at that joint. <laughs> Nah, yeah. That Titanic didn't stand a chance versus one. They, and that's the, do you know how terrifying that is? And you know what? I always, I need to go back and watch Titanic because I felt like they should have did a better job of making the, the icebergs more scary. You ride and it's a cold night. All of a sudden, y'all come through these, this scary ass, big, big ass, ass icebergs. That was scared of a bunch of, do you remember on, uh, there was a movie we watched where somebody was in the war. They was dodging icebergs. I forget what it was, but that shit is terrifying, bro. That's and people said. forget the Titanic all happened because of somebody's mistake. Yeah. Somebody's mistake. Somebody's supposed to see that. I ain't, it ain't like the iceberg was like, you know, it ain't like it get attacked by iceberg. It's like somebody was supposed to see this and tried to, oh, shit. But Terrence, honestly, dude, honestly, what do you do? What if you, if you, you remember when we used to, me and Terrence, we used to go fishing and we would ride out. And before, remember when we got to that point, remember dad was driving, we sitting there all of a sudden. The water just start looking different, and we rode up on that fucking land in the middle of the ocean. And Dad had to take the fucking oar and get and us you out. See, I don't fuck with that water. That shit was terrifying. I don't fuck with water. And do you know Dad's ass was scared all them times, and just we yeah. just out there with him. And I knew his black ass was scared back then. You know when your dad's scared, cause that nigga not saying oh, the, the dad shit. Yeah, he just sitting there like he not shit. saying the don't worries. He just ain't saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are we good? He's like, I just got to get off this. Give me that oil. Yeah. He didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to worry for real. When your father worry? Damn. <laughs> nah, no bullshit. But, that's the, but you see, I'm thinking they might have rolled into some shit. And look, how you going to wheel out of and them big ass wheels? How you going to get past Man, all that? Man, fuck that. Somebody's responsible for this shit. Now, now you can see all types of shit. You see they found a debris field for the, uh, what's the name? For the what? The submarine. Oh, yeah. what the submarine? They don't know if it's the submarine, but they found some debris. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, hey, it is, like you said, y'all shouldn't have fucking did this. Y'all shouldn't have never went down there. And you know that's how folk, that's how regular folks going to look at it. Y'all should have never took y'all ass down there in the first place. That's how I feel. Y'all should have never went down there looking for the Titanic. It's not that interesting unless y'all was going down there to get some money. And you know what? Y'all just fucked up, too, by dying. Yep. Because now somebody's going to say, look, get the game together. They were looking for something. They were looking for something. And, and they going to go down there. Mm-hmm. And they going to go missing. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what they going to say? This is the second voyage that went missing in so and so many months. And guess what it's going to be? A big motherfucker down there. It's about time we found out uh-huh. Godzilla. You know what? That's why I'm going to go see the Meg too. Did y'all see the trailer? Godzilla going to come out the water with that, air, with that motherfucker <laughs> submersive in his hand. They're going to say, what's he holding? It's the submersive. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Look, he throw that truck. He's in building. <laughs> Damn, that'd be a nightmare. <laughs> Shameless plug. Rest in peace to those people who were yeah. unfortunately lost their lives in that. Un- Terrence, we don't way. know if they lost their lives. They could have washed up on shore somewhere. I said to my girl, she was like, <laughs> I was, last thing I'm going to say, remember the movie Don't Look Up? Remember how gullible they were to just get on the ship and go out there and then they got ate by that at the end? Yeah, just like that. I feel like that's kind of this. Mm-hmm. Kind of this thing. You know what I was telling my girl? I was like, look, that movie, the movie they make after this joint, starring, look, Kate Blanchett, uh, George Clooney. George Clooney. This is fucked up to say, Terrence. It's fucked up to say. It's insensitive. That's what the Hollywood studios are thinking right now. They just ain't saying it. You think we, we missing? They going to have a movie out next year. <laughs> <laughs> they already cooking. Nah, Hulu be on it with the docs. Hulu nah. will make a doc in the middle of some shit happening. Yep, they made the, the murder, murder joint before the uh, trial was yep. even up. 
And you know what? Shameless plug. Before we get off boats, I follow this Instagram page called Insane Yachts. When I tell you that's the most inspiring page ever because even they, a rich motherfucker can't afford a yacht. You know how, remember the episode of Secession? Uh, what Did you see the part of Secession where they got on that big ass yacht because they were trying to figure shit out? Yeah. It's like yachts like that. Like this is called the whatever. And you could buy, they do a tour like how you would look at a house. Yeah. That shit is so inspiring, bro. I make you want to buy one. Insane Yachts. It's actually a great person to follow on your Instagram. If you go to their page, you'll probably see followed by me. And that's it. Yeah, I'll go follow that. <laughs> y'all go follow Because I'm not following insane y'all. Tans, That's just about to depress the fuck out of me. Because It's inspiring. It's, it's literally just like boats you can buy. Even rich motherfuckers can't afford a yacht. You got to one, live by water. You, you got to pay small. for it to, pay on, to stay on water. You think it's small. You need to be thinking big. If bitch. you're not going to be getting on that yacht, then I don't want that yacht. Uh, the news broke last week of Tyler Perry... Um, buying and now owning BET slash VH1, mm -hmm. right? But that is actually not quite what happened. Tyler Perry does not own BET or VH1 yet as of yesterday, which is the 20th. I don't know if something changed between the 22nd, the 21st, 22nd and today. But as of the 20th, the New York Post posted, uh, posted an article that said that um, Tyler Perry, so basically BET and VH1 is owned by Paramount. They bought it from Viacom for $2.6 billion. They're selling it for $3 billion, and they said Tyler Perry not trying to pay that $3 billion. Does he have it? So basically the other day. Oh, well, he would have to. He, it would be like a, yeah. you know. But the other day, Paramount announced the sale, and Tyler Perry uh, announced a statement that he has strong interest in that. So with them selling, Tyler Perry saying he wanted it, people just went ahead and assumed ownership had already been taking place. Okay. But the shit is at a halt, and they said they don't even know if a deal is likely at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tyler Perry does own 25% of BET Plus, the streaming app. And he's like, I've been over here. In his statement, he was like, I've been over there for, you know, whatever years, and I think we've been made, we made good ground, and I think if I take ownership or whatever, we could take it to new heights, whatever. But on the heels of that, well, I guess we'll have to remain to be seen what, what that's going to look like. But I wanted to ask you, is buying a TV network like BET, VH1, do you look at that as something that would be worth it? Especially with the decline in cable and the rise in streaming. Because cable is on a year-by-year-by-year by year by year decline for the past decade. And, of course, streaming is booming. Yeah, because you, as, with a network, I feel like you could... I think there's a lot of opportunities with network TV. Network TV's dead now, but you never know what network, network TV could eventually turn into. Network TV, that's the most secure place for a writer in Hollywood. Network TV. Because we're, 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 we're going to be on. Like it's, 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 Those shows tend to run longer. It's not us writing this big-ass season, and then I wrote for, for that, 10 yeah. weeks, and then now I'm not working anymore. When I'm writing on for a network, I could be working for that network. I think we definitely want to push for a black man to own a network. We should 100% already own BET. So I definitely think this one, BET, yeah, we should. it's worth it, this one. Tyler yeah. Perry, I think, definitely needs to do that. Putting yourself in a financial hole in, hope for, in, in, in hopes for network television to have this resurgence or... Something like that is a big risk. And if that's what he's doing, maybe I would advise against it. Because if you're talking about is network TV ever going to come back, that's the... I don't see it. And that's the question because but, uh, BET was black-owned hella years ago. I think 20 years ago. Then, you know, shit changed. And now that would be dope to have Tyler Perry have it back. So I do agree. But at the same time, it's like... Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Is it... But is it worth it now in 2023... Because who's watching BET now? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing that, will, that, that made me say, well, damn, you know what? Now that I think about it, cable is not. And look, you don't just get cable, BET on basic cable no more. Remember you used to have Channel 60? Yeah. Basic. Now you don't. You got to pay for it. So like, you got to have cable. VH1 is, I guess, look, remember like love and hip hop, stuff like that. And then to advance, I don't trust Tyler Perry. 
with that. Not even because of his work, but because of how Tyler Perry operates. Remember the story that came out about Tyler Perry with the, uh, I think it was the first AD or somebody that worked on the set where they were like, we had a whole day came, but Tyler Perry was going to be on set this day and he came and changed everything. He just Did changed everything? Oh, you didn't see that? No. Basically, I think it was a first AD, a, a, a first assistant director. They was like, we blocked, we went over lines, we rehearsed, had a whole day planned. And then the next day when we started, when we went to shoot, Tyler Perry was on set. And they said he changed everything. They said he rewrote parts of the script. He changed how we blocked and whatever. And they said that's just kind of how it is working for, every, working for Tyler Perry because that's what he does. He has his hand in everything. You know, he writes pretty much all his shows. <laughs> yeah. That's why they don't be that good because he's writing everything. So I feel like if you own a network, you're going to have to relinquish some of that to be successful. And I don't know how well he would do that. Tyler Perry scares me because he's just, to me, he's like this dude with money. Like, you made a bunch of money from your career, and now you have enough money to sit up at the top and politic all of it, you know? But you're not like Michael Jordan, you know? Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan had some learning to do and probably still does have learning to do on the ownership side of, like, owning the Charlotte Hornets. But his game was never a question. We never had a question about his game. That, that man could ball. It's just he got to learn the business side of it. I think Tyler Perry knows the business side of this shit more than he has actual talent for this shit. Yeah. You know? And I think we don't look at Tyler Perry like how we look at some of the famed film directors of history, even in black history. Like Tyler Perry's classic films, when you start talking about classic movies by Tyler Perry, that's, a, that's an interesting conversation. And people might say that we are harsh on... on Tyler Perry or whatever, but I respect his success, but his art I've always been critical of. And I think for you to sit mm -hmm. so high on a tier and own something like BET, I think you get in that more so because you made the money more so than because you're getting like this type of crown for your... Like, th like this mm -hmm. being like the biggest fruit of your label. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think that Tyler Perry is like this king filmmaker. I think he's a great businessman, which might be good for him owning BZ. TP got some classics. He got a few. You can't take that. Would from you call him. Daddy's Little Girls a classic? Yes, that's a classic black film. We loved it. I was born by the river. Um, it, it just elbow wife beater beating a dude's ass that abused his daughter. Think classic. About it. Everybody that, knows was that. Was that a classic? Do you think Menace to Society is a classic? Menace to Society 100% is a classic. Okay, but guess what? It's actually not that great of a movie. It's just classic. Menace to Society is a classic. Terrence, Menace, to, Menace to Society is full of bad acting. The pacing is terrible. Shit be happening and you like, okay, but bro, it's a classic. Daddy's Little Girls to me is a classic. Uh, to me, a classic is something that everybody can identify with. The reason why Menace Family to Family that praise. Dive and Mad Black Woman. Why did I get married? Classic. Okay, bet. We stopping at four. Y'all need to realize. And see, that's what I'm saying. We're Madea, stopping at four. Medea's family reunion. Job rating all over this land. Medea's family reunion. You said a family that prays. Die of a mad black woman. We're not, in the, we're not here to talk about his filmography. I'm just saying he got some wands. He but, haven't done enough. And he haven't made a splash enough to me to stop making movies. We need you to be making movies now. Ridley Scott made Alien. Feel me? He's still making movies. And Blade Runner. Tyler Perry has three, four shows on, Terrence. Terrell, but that's my thing. He had, I would argue he imagine has done enough. Ridley, imagine Ridley Scott or, any, or some of these old people, or these old directors, having movies coming out, but they got three shows on TV. It wouldn't be good. That's why I said, you haven't reached the, the pinnacle of making movies. To and now we have you, the businessman. But Terrence, Tyler Perry's still making movies. He just came out with, they just not that great. He did Acrimony a couple years ago. He did the one with the ashtray, bitch, that joint. The joint that just came out. And then he did, what's the, what's the joint he did with the, the, uh, the mixed girl and the guy on the plantation? I just was looking at that. People movie. liked it for some reason. But so he's still making movies with his shows. They just not that great. I, I would, don't I think wouldn't that put him in the category had a big movie since the... I wouldn't say it's Madea's family reunion type movies. Those were big movies. They were. 
His movies are like, I got my own fan base and they gonna go watch type. Like, he got Nicki Minaj releases. You know? The Bob's gonna show up, but... Nah, yeah. To me, it's... No, no shade to Nicki Minaj. I'm just saying, y'all know anything she drops is gonna go up because her fan base her is fan nuts. Base, yeah. Even if everybody else not fucking with it, they'll fuck with it. But and Tyler Perry does kind of have that. He kind of has the the forty year old woman and up sick mom granny in them. He gonna have them watch at least, even if it's on Netflix. They gonna go find it and watch. I wouldn't put him in the class of people that don't make movies no more though, Terrence. Because I know what you're saying, and to me that's the issue with bruh. My issue is he going to try to write and direct and produce everything that comes out on BET. And it's like, yo, you got to let people kind of cook. You can't be showing up to the set saying, there yeah, ain't we, no way he going to buy BET and do that. There ain't what, no way. That's what he doing with his own shit now. And guess what? You would think that he don't ain't going to have time for that. This motherfucker is in sisters, bros, that, King's Court, whatever the shit mom watch. I ain't saying that the man don't work hard, man, but I like to see talent. Uh, we don't need hard work. No, you right about that. At this point... Eric, we got plenty of people that work hard. We need talent, man. I feel like Tyler Perry, you got talent. We need you to be in a $150 million budget movie. Yeah. That, he does. Tyler that. Perry's getting... Remember, look, at one point, Tyler Perry had Maya Angelou on your movie. You are that nigga. If you get her to get up and get in your movie. What film director could have gotten Maya Angelou in, her, in their movie right now? It'd be tough. Ava DuVernay. But look, oh, that's a great example. But you know what? We need more. Ava's... Where are you at? There's an idea, but that's the thing. Tia. Where is Ava? Ava, first of all, Ava still has Queen Sugar on own network. And she just worked on. Oh my God, Terrell, please! Terrell, get the fuck up! What do you no, want your people not to talking do? about Queen Terrell. Terrell, people love Queen Sugar. You can hate all you want. People love that show. I thought we was talking about making movies, y'all. I'm sorry. I just got very irritated with you saying, oh, no, you're right. oh Ava DuVernay you said she got Queen Sugar. What? <laughs> on BET Plus? It's right. on OWN. Oh, oh, it's on own. This is my thing too, though, Terrence. Tyler Perry and Ava DuVernay have a relationship. As does Tyler Perry and Oprah. So maybe they bring them to BET. I don't know. What is Oprah going to do on BET? Oprah's not doing anything. I don't fuck with Oprah or Gail. I'm sorry. Did I don't fuck with Gail. O Oprah is a legend, and we have to respect Oprah. No, we don't. But Oprah's a legend, but <laughs> Oprah's a legend. We got to respect her. But Gail. Would never forget that shit you did with me or Bean Brian. You got him fucked up. If I met Gail, I would say, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she be saying, no, no. You've done enough. You've done enough. Yeah. What you did about Cole Boys? That was fucked up. I don't know. Speaking of Stephen A., did you see what he posted? Bro, you. What's up I with him? I don't want to get into that, bro. <laughs> What's up with your boy? <laughs> I got Mariah Mills in the chat. Why are you talking to Nuts. her, Stephen A? Mm. <laughs> y'all would, would be so upset if I really was able to do my Stephen A thing and just get on and just say shit. I was looking at this video on YouTube, y'all, and I'm going to just be kind of transparent with y'all. I was looking at this video on like filmmaking advice. It's a great video on YouTube. If you just search filmmaking advice, it has filmmaking advice from some of the most, I would say, world-renowned directors that have mastered their, their, their crafts. And they just try to kind of give advice, but it's it's filmmaking advice, but it can also be seen as life advice. I would say it's great to just put on and listen to in the background. Um, of course, my favorite director when he speaks on that video, it just kind of sticks out. You know what I'm saying? Because I've heard most of his interviews before, and I came across something he said in an interview in like 1994, and he said basically he was talking about when you make when he makes movies and how personal they are. Mm -hmm. And he said, you should be semi-embarrassed about certain people seeing your movie if you're working on that person, because you should be working on that person of a level. And I just want to say it again. You should be embarrassed of, people see of certain people seeing your movie because it should be that personal. And low key, I said, damn, that's a real eye-opening statement I wanted to bring into the podcast mm -hmm. and everybody who listened to it because I was thinking about, you know what? Me and you work on a very personal level. And when you do YouTube and you share your life with people or you do vlogs or you just get up there and you say your opinion every week, mm -hmm. that's working on a little bit more of a personal level than somebody who just got to go to work, open this, close this, and then I yep. leave. I don't got to get personal with nobody. Nobody has to know how I feel about anything. But we work on a personal level. 
And I was saying, you know how many times that us as like you'll post something on social media, maybe it's a video, maybe if maybe it's even a tweet, and there's like an embarrassment that you feel. Put it like this. You're the I've been embarrassed of almost every video that we've posted on our channel. There's a part of the video where I'm like, ah, yeah. You know? Or peep this. My girl will be like, or have my my shit on, and I'll be like, yo, turn that off. Hey, yo, turn that off. Or you ever hear yourself talking and you like, yo, and actors say that all the time. This my thing. And this is what was eye open about his statement about how you should be embarrassed at people seeing your work. I was thinking, you know what? When it comes to this social media shit, when it comes to this shit that we're doing with our friends, family, hanging out with anybody, being anywhere, there's certain things that we don't do because we feel like, ah, this will be a little embarrassing, you know? But the best work I think we find comes from moments where we are slightly embarrassed. If y'all look at them vlogs that I posted of me going and seeing my girl in, in Seattle and then we out there, y'all know how it is when you with your girl or a girl. You know, you got the you got the nerves going. You got the you got a lot going on. You know, yeah. But I realized, damn, every time you put that video on, I'm ja embarrassed a little bit. Yeah. But it's such a great ass moment. And I said, you know what? I'm embarrassed of it, not because I'm not proud of it. It's because it's that personal to me. It is that the work is that close to yeah. me in that. That like, mm. damn, I'm embarrassed for you to put it on because low key, I don't want nobody to say that they don't like it. Yeah. Because that's how close it is to me. And I was just, I only wanted to bring it up to say like, I feel like us being embarrassed, if you, if there's pictures that I don't post, there's videos I won't post because I think they're embarrassing. But like, when you think of it in that viewpoint that if it's personal enough and it's, it is close to you enough that it should be embarrassing, I feel like that'll help you get out of your way with shit. Like, for real, like, for me, most of the shit that I've done, I've, I've just thought about, has been embarrassing. Yeah. And if I let the fact that me thinking it was going to be embarrassed, embarrassing stop me from doing it, I probably would not have done it. Yeah. You just said embarrassing like 70 times. <laughs> it was embarrassing. Now I think about it being embarrassing, it was embarrassing. <laughs> this whole fucking thing is embarrassing. But you know what you're right. My, um, my mother-in-law listened to the podcast last week about shit, the, uh, the baby. Okay. And so she's talking to my girl. My girl was telling me about this. She was like, yeah, you know, I listened to the podcast. It was beautiful. It made me tear up. And my girl's like, did you hear the part about the pocket pussy? And I'm like, why would you say that? Why would you say that? And she was like, no, I actually turned it off because I had to do something. And I'm like, thank God she didn't listen to that part. Because that came right after we talked talking about the double ass. And, oh, my God. Yeah. But, and so to me, it is kind of like we a part of that is you give so much that you don't even think about it until after the fact. I didn't think about that. Wouldn't embarrass. I don't get embarrassed to me, like you said, until after the fact. And then, yeah. oh shit. And that's what I'm trying you to. Know? That's the message that I'm trying to give off to some of y'all. Some of you are being too safe. You know, there's somebody out here that needs to hear this. Like the more personal that you get with your work, the more it's gonna mean to you. I was gonna say this because I wanted to bring this up. We're gonna be. This is how we're gonna pivot to it. Uh, Young Miami was on somebody's podcast. I think it was that dude Jason Lee. Oh, yeah. Or whatever. And mm. she got up there and she was kind of talking about herself. And he asked her a very important question. We're getting ready to play it right here. Because this is going to take us to the next level of this convo. Like with a, with a W. Like I'm a whore. But define that, though. Like I'm a whore. <laughs> what, what if Summer comes to you as pretty as she is and says, Mom, I want to be a city girl? She ain't going to be no city girl. <laughs> so Summer ain't allowed to be no city girl? Mm-mm. No. I want her raised totally different. Like, you know, I don't even want her to eat a see the light of day like that. Like, I really want her to just be, like, you know, like, level-headed a school girl and she's on a whole nother way. It's like, you know, I kind of was raised different, so I don't want to raise her up how I was raised. So, you know, I'm a city girl. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but I don't want that for my daughter. Okay. Um, and I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to talk about this okay. because I thought that was very, very eye-opening as well. Because, like I said, when you see, when you look at these artists that make music and they play sports, they making a lot of money from this. And I know money don't really have anything to do with it, but a lot of the times 
their answer to like why they do what they do be coming from passion. And this is it's my life. This is what I, you know, music is passionate. I'm sorry, I'm passionate about music and music is my passion and this is what I want to do with my life. And that's what builds to me fans forever. Lifetime fans. Mm -hmm. You a fan of Beyonce? Terrell is a fan of Beyonce as much as he is. And he wasn't as big as a fan until after that Beyonce homecoming joint came out. And everybody saw what she put into that Beachella night. You were impacted by the night already. When I was, you saw what got put into it. I was a Beyonce, yeah, I was a Beyonce fan, but after I watched, I started watching Coachella at the Coachella performance that she headlined first. I never get this night. I had to work the next day. Don't make it a long thing. Total go. beehive thing. I won't. But I had to work the next day. I started at like midnight, and I didn't go to sleep until like four or five a.m. I remember that you were. And from that day, me and my. I was real beehive then. I was on some swarm shit after that. And I think it's because he's able to see the level that Beyonce's willing to go to for mm -hmm. this shit. Like, this is some real shit. And I guarantee you, if you ask Beyonce or, or a sports player or any other person if they wanted their kid to do what they're doing, it's almost like career suicide to say, nah. I'm a, I'm a basketball... You, like, imagine LeBron saying he don't want Bronny to play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. What? That would be national news. Imagine Beyonce saying she didn't want Blue to be a singer. It would depend a, on why, though. I just want her to live a completely different life. I don't want, I don't want her to be in the in a spotlight at all. I want her to, you know... This girl said she don't want her daughter to see the light of day. All I'm saying is this, y'all. I think that's what happens when you are working... With a dip when your work is not so personal at all. I think this means your work isn't personal to you at all. To the point where you are trying to detach when you get off work. Think about it. If you when you when you worked at Best Buy Terrell, was work personal for you? Hell no. Sometimes. Look, sometimes, but most times I had a passion. I had a passion for leadership. So. But you had a ceiling though. Soon as you got up here, you said, you know what? This shit ain't important for me to be stressing about this. Or maybe Terrell, okay. you were a little bit different. Nah, for sure. But, but even you, there's a level where it's like, yo, for me working at Best Buy, I don't need to be dealing with this shit. Yeah, but you know what? Even in that, if you ask me if I would want my son to do that, I would probably say yes. Like, I wouldn't mind if not he yet. decided to do it. It wouldn't be like, nah. You and, and you see, I'm not talking about Best Buy when I say that. I'm just saying, when you worked at Best Buy, it wasn't personal. It's not like, you're not taking none of that shit home. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. It's whatever. Your job. It's a job. It's your even, no matter how much responsibility you get, it's yeah. it's a job. I just think it looks funny when you're an artist and you do that. It just kind of shows that you make that you that you are catching a lick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is what I was gonna say it sounds like. It sounds like plug talk. Okay. You know why? Because I feel like she sounds like the plug. She's saying, I don't want my daughter to do none of that. I don't want my daughter, I want my daughter, I don't want my daughter to see the light of day. I want my daughter to grow up a completely different way. Like, damn, you want your daughter to be completely different than what you are selling. Like, you know for a fact you sell bullshit so much to the point that you want your daughter to be completely different. And I felt like, I'm not trying to sound like that conspiracy dude, but like, she's pushing this to Y'all daughters. Though. It's 100, but yeah, exactly. That's what I say. She she knows that what I'm pushing is a tr is one is gonna catch buzz. One I'm gonna make money from it. People gonna follow it. Oh, but my daughter, nah. Yeah, Cause it's not good. It's not good for you. It's toxic. I don't want my kids to have it, but you can have it. It's bro, this this literally what's it is the most the system thing that you can do. It is like being a plug. Cause and I feel like she's a plug because for real, for real. You know, we talk about the crack rock all the time. And when, you know, people are do anything for the crack rock, anything to go viral, anything to, to have a, a moment. Mm. And I feel like when you're, when you've already had your moment and you know you can just curate moments and you get up to that certain level, yeah. I feel like you don't talk like the person that's dishing or tr you don't talk to the person, you don't talk like the person that's tripped on the rock. You don't even sound like the person that's pushing the rock. You're the, you're the plug at that point. Look, you think the plug wants his kid to take on the family business? No. Mm -mm, they didn't want their kids in the game at all. I was watching Bad Boys 2. And of course, you remember Johnny Tapia? Whatever, his uh -huh. daughter. 
This dog ain't have shit. I, hey, that dog ain't have no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. Bringing dresses and shit in. I said, you know what? They don't be wanting to pass this shit to nobody, no drug dealer. You know, everybody always says that, that they don't want their kids. If, they, if your kids end up in the streets, then you fail. Mm -hmm. Nipsey used to say that all the time. I just think it's crazy that I don't want to be the person that's shitting on women, hip hop, and women music. But I don't think that there's many artists these days outside of women, hip hop, and women, maybe the, the raunchy women artists that would say that they didn't want their daughter to grow up and do what they doing. Like, do you think that these hip hop artists would say they wouldn't want their son to grow up and be a rapper like them? I feel like they would say, yeah. I but think so far as the rapping, yes. So far as what they ended up doing before, I would think they would say no, of course. But to be a rapper, yeah. But then again, I don't know. Do I can't say that confidently. I can't say that confidently, but I can confidently say that I think most of these female rappers would not want their daughter to grow up and be a female rapper. Do you think Jay-Z wants Blue to grow up and be a rapper? Absolutely not. No. Not if she going to be rapping like Hot What's Out There Now. That's, that's what I'm, what I'm like, So that's, the, that's what I'm saying. I don't think Gucci wants... Ice to grow up and be, oh, then again, but Gucci look, is a, I don't, I don't know how think he's that Ice has to grow up in, in Ice, put it like this, and this is all I'm pointing out. It just seems like a male rapper, his influences are a little bit different than a, a female rapper's now. As to where you don't have to feel so bad about what you're talking about if you grow up and talk about something else. I'm not saying that she can't have a daughter and her daughter grow up about something and rap about something else, but. Just the fact that you yourself don't even want your daughter, you want your daughter to grow up a completely different way, mm -hmm. I just I feel think like that speaks morally to what you're doing. I wouldn't say it's a women hip-hop their thing, though, because I do think it's certain yeah. male hip-hop artists that also wouldn't want they wouldn't kids. want their kids to grow up. And, I, and like, I, you think about like somebody like Beyonce. If Beyonce were to come out and say she didn't want Blue to be In the what, she or... is, well, what she is because of what it comes with you can't even do this you can't do that you can't do that that would make sense that's why i said it depends on why young miami though is different because you know what you do you spread poison you're no different and that's why i think it's super different than beyonce because beyonce yeah. is it uplifting exactly her reasons would be more so about blues well-being and i think miami's is the same her daughter's well-being but you know i think what y'all do powers that answer differently and the only reason why we played it, why we played that because in the beginning she was like i'm a whore i'm a with a capital w a whore like so you are in this interview selling bullshit you're not a whore you're not you're not fucking anybody you're gonna fuck a rich nigga you're probably only fucking with diddy or maybe some other nigga but low-key do you see how you're on this joint like i am a whore you're gonna say that about yourself but then you know for a fact you would never want your daughter to say that. Think about it. A man who's like, I'm a gangster, right? They probably wouldn't want their son to say that. Well, 100%. But, no, it's the same, Terrence. But they're the not same. capping about themselves. You know? That's the difference. They sometimes he is do, a, though. He is. A, he might really be a, a gangster. But we know for a fact, young Miami, you not a whore. You, You're selling it. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're right. We don't know if these niggas are thugs or not. But they not up. We don't know for a fact you're pushing an image for bullshit. Uh, okay, let me respond. You got it. You got it because I'm not, I'm not gonna go back. And this what I. Before. This what I'll say. The, a lot of these male artists' image be fake, and they be acting like they hard and they not. You know what I'm saying? Or they act like they this way for their image. So 100, percent it's that's the same. It doesn't take away from what Miami's doing. Oh, but them niggas be doing the same thing. To I just me, don't think that they would tell their son that they wouldn't want them to be that. I don't think a nigga is acking like a fake I, gangster and then saying, oh, I don't want my son to be a gangster. I so don't you're think a faking any, gangster, and then you want to raise a son that you don't want to be like you. It would I just be, don't see, I don't think that there's many artists out like that now. But I think most female rappers don't want their daughter to, to do that. And it would most be, strippers. It would be more, of course. It would be problematic, though, if the gangster rapper doesn't say he doesn't want his son to be a, to not do that. To me, it would be, if you're a gangster rapper and you, and you want your son to be a gang, if you're a gangster and you want your son to do that same thing, that's more problematic than saying that you don't want them to do that. Because you doing bullshit and we know it. But I you mean, saying that they, you don't want your son to, you, you, you're not minding if your son grows up and does the same thing. Because then... If you want your son to grow up and be a rapper like you, 
then yeah. it's like, I would hope it would be in a T.I. way. Like, his son raps more so like a J. Cole. It's less I'm about... A kid. I'm, he, he raps about, you know, he's more conscious. He's not rapping about what T.I. What T. was rapping about when T.I. was coming up. You know? Yeah. So I guess I, that is a, it's a little different. If it's that, cool. But I don't think anybody... T.I. wouldn't want his son talking about nine in my right, 45 on the other hand. You see the, his other son. This is my thing. You making it about the son more so than it's about Miami and what she doing. I'm not misunderstood on my on on why she wouldn't want her son to do that or her son or her kid having a or I'm sorry her daughter. I'm not misunderstood on their daughters and their kids having a choice of their own and doing whatever they want and might not want to do that on both sides of the board. I just think it's just funny to see somebody selling some shit that they would or doing some shit that they wouldn't want their daughter to do. I'm responding to you saying that you think the women would do it, but you don't think the men. No, I said I think that's what I was responding to. No, I never think about it. I never said that. I just think majority uh, I, and I said I think some men, but I think you just Terrell's doing that thing where you're trying to like make it even so they don't look like I'm ragging on anybody. But I am really ragging straight on the women Miami. The women hip hop community. Like, because I feel like it's so much about like sex appeal and stuff that even the women that are doing it themselves know for a fact it's a dirty game and I wouldn't even want my daughter to participate in this. But only reason why I bring it up is because it's still being sold. That just made that just want people to understand like we take certain shit very serious. We uh, people take a lot of shit serious. But when you see stuff like this, it's like okay, this should be everybody's reminder to not take these artists as serious as we actually do. Not for sure. Because they are think, really putting on a front. I think that rap as a whole, that, and the only reason why I say that, I'm not trying to like make it even. I'm just saying that that is a broader conversation than just women hip hop. Even though their shit is raunchy, that they do. like the, It's very rooted in like sex. I disagree with I think you. It's, go ahead. Go ahead. I, di- I disagree with... Go ahead. I don't, don't want to cut the nigga off. No, you go ahead. Then I'll respond. I just disagree that men do it. At, I, I think it is a primary thing with the with the women because I feel like I think regardless, I, I don't think that there's many male artists that wouldn't that would say, "No, nah, I don't want my son to do this." I think they would say, "You know, if my son wanted to do this, I, I guess I wouldn't, but maybe he he could go do something else." Street niggas, but I get see, it. I don't want my son to be in the streets. We're not talking about streets. But you got to remember, he didn't ask her, "Do you want your daughter to be a rapper?" He said, do you want your daughter to be a city girl? That's Which is different. what you are. A but, city girl is your but, rap term. Terrence, but that's, that's like different. saying, that's would you like, want your son to be... It's in, one thing to say... A group. Do you want your son to be that's a like, rapper versus saying, do you want your son to be the next Jeezy? It's like, whoa, what, ha- what Jeezy had to get... What I had to do to get to being Jeezy, I don't want that for my son. I think more... I think rappers would say... I think if they, he would have asked Young Miami if she wanted her daughter to be a rapper... She would have said, if she want to rap, cool. Maybe not about what I rap about. You know what I'm saying? Then that kind of makes it separate. I don't think... Is him I think she that just daughter, speaks to my point that she's selling some bullshit that she does not even believe in. I think Miami is just like the, the Asian folks at the, at the carryout. You never see the people that work at the carryout eating five wings and fried rice with mumbo sauce if you're from out here. You never see them eating General Tso's chicken and rice, chicken and broccoli. You don't see it. They just feed the shit to you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, it's, to me, Miami and them just like that. Like, you don't want this for your own life. And that's the same, but if since you want to speak on female, the, 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 the ladies in hip-hop, the ladies in hip-hop all do this. They sell the same thing to the ladies, but they don't live that life themselves. May was in a relationship, just got out of a relationship, got in a new relationship. Right. But that's why I said you don't Cardi gotta go B? through the whole thing. Oh, that's why. Just, I, that's why I'm saying what just I'm for saying. For people that like, don't know, though, Cardi B's in a relationship. She's in a relationship. Um, Glorilla is in a relationship. Fuck nigga free came out. She's in a relationship. It's all city girls. Like fuck JT is in a relationship with Uzi. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all of it, they're not. They don't believe in it. They're not eating the. They're not eating the fried rice either. They're just selling it to you. And that's why you eating it up. Uh, and I don't think that I don't think that it's the same one in all hip hop. I think that is women hip hop. That is a woman's hip hop problem, and it's okay for us to talk about a problem in the women hip hop community. Just, 
without talking about the male hip hop community and trying to make it seem like this is an overall male problem. Because I really think that that's more of a female, that's more of a woman hip hop. I think women are running hip hop low key, job like as far as just the fun. They having more fun than we they are. are having more fun. They got more anthems right now. Look, right now. So I'm not. But let me ask no. you a question. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just pointing out that fact. Let me ask you a question then, because just like the women come out and they sell sex and whatever, but they really behind the scenes being loving relationships. It's a lot of these niggas. Terrell, you're talking about but what they're making, listen. but I'm not talking but about what they're making. I'm just talking but listen, about if you they were heard what the they question. kids. Listen, do. I'm saying, I'm, ask, I'm asking you a question. I want you to answer it. Just like with the ladies, you know what I'm saying, with their, being really in relationships, there's a lot of guys out here or a lot of artists that are men that rap about a certain thing, but they're not living that life either. And you are so missing my it's not. Plan. It's not about that. They're selling it to you. Future doesn't even do drugs. I think Future would tell his son to do exactly. I think Future would be okay with his son doing exactly what he's doing. That Terrence, but just, him saying that that doesn't change the issue. But I don't think. But that's all I'm talking about. We're not. I you, didn't bring this up to talk about people talking Terrence, about said, stuff in their music and not really doing it. You I'm just saying said, selling a lifestyle that you don't want to pass on to your kid. Is a women hip hop problem. It is I not a male hip hop so. problem. I don't think so. You, you I think just, most men in hip hop would want their son to rap. You wouldn't say you want your son to not see the light of day and not do this. I just think that we're getting the city girls thing mixed up with rapping. He Maybe I think that's you because he said, "Would you want your daughter to be to a be city a girl. city girl?" No. Do you know what the city girls are? I wouldn't want my daughter a to be rap a city group. Girl. Yeah, Terrence, but that's different. You don't see how that's a different question than saying, do you want your daughter to be a rapper? Come on. Like, really think. That's if a different question. Young Miami was a city girl, I feel like she's going to say it's we the rappers. I don't think she's going to say, Terrence, oh. that's not what a city girl is. A city girl is not, she would not say rapper. City girls of, girl, you don't give a fuck about whatever. You, she's going to give you that explanation. Future, this is the thing about, like, the, the reason why I bring it back to the men is because you keep saying it's our only a women hip-hop thing. I don't, th- and I, I agree. I still don't think but that women say- would want, even if you're saying, oh, she was talking about city girls. I still don't think she would want her daughter doing what you are doing, period. So let's clarify. When you say it's a, only a female hip hop thing, yeah. you mean not wanting your kid to do what you do. Yeah. Not being proud of what you're doing. You just doing it to catch the leg. But if you have a daughter, you really wouldn't want her to do this. I think, I don't think that's an issue in the male community. I think men want their sons to be rappers. Not that it's the best thing, but I don't think so they're do you doing want, something that they know, oh, I would never want my son. You to think be. Future would be okay with his son being Future, meaning dogging women out, rapping about drugs and that. You think he'd no, be okay with that? No, I'm talking. Because that I'm, is I'm the conversation. About, but no, it's not, Terrell. You're making no the men just about your son growing up rapping. See, and I you're said, making Miami. I use what, Mi- a city I girl. Used what Miami said about being a city girl. But you're not applying the same thing to the men. I used what Miami said about being a city girl and applied it to all of women hip hop because I feel like even though you're saying, oh, she's only talking about being a city girl. I think she feels the same exact way about her rap moniker as city girl and being a rapper as city girl. And I think most women in that community, because it's ran by this sexual image, they would not want their daughters to follow in their footsteps. Future, even though hip hop is ran by a drug image, I feel like he might have wanted his son to do something different, but he would not have a, a problem with his son growing up and being the next future. I don't think he would. I think these women would have a problem with their daughter growing up and, and talking about sucking niggas' dicks. They on, may on not do that, though, T. They may not take that route. If you ask Meg Cardi and them if, if they want their daughter to grow up and be a rapper. Like them, yeah. I don't nah. See, you add in that part. I thought because you, you added take that. that part out when it comes to the men, and nah, it just so becomes you if they don't. If they he wants to be like future, up, because the nigga asked her if she wanted her daughter to be a city girl. And when I say, do you want your daughter? If, if they ask future, do you want your son to grow up and be future? I think he might say no. He gonna say no off, but don't be the street me. Don't be the yes. And I think that's what she said. If they ask her, if you want your daughter to right. grow up and rap? Okay. See, and what this is what I'm saying. I don't think that she only feels that way about the city girl slang term. I think that she and all the other hip-hop artists, Meg Thee Stallion, I don't think that they want their daughters. And that's all I'm saying. I don't think that they want their daughters 
I think they would react the same way if you ask, ask all these women artists if they want their daughter to be a, a woman artist. They're going to be like, A rapper? No. I think some of them might say yes. But in the same way you say, I don't see how you can say that, but then say for the men that they're going to, they wouldn't mind. It's because I don't I, think Rick Ross would want his son to grow up and, be and Rick try Ross? to be Rick Ross because of all of the shit that came with that. See, look, you, that moniker, that lifestyle, the, the when, image, the shit that you went through with 50 and all of the... The you don't have story. to go through that. Like, young Miami's daughter is not about to have to go through what you had to go through. So, question. But you're I saying, still don't think you want your daughter to be a female rapper in 2000, whatever. But because you assuming, know what it comes with. It comes with talking about sex. But that, if you would have asked Queen Latifah if she wanted her daughter to be a rapper. Terrell, Queen Latifah then, was rapping like but niggas. Terrence, back then, that's what they rapped about. You don't know what they're going to be rapping about in 20 years when her daughter grow up. That's assuming that this is just going to be about All this. I'm saying is, in the very simple, simplest form, I don't think that these women want their daughters to grow up and be rappers like them. I think But you think legs. the men wouldn't mind? No, they wouldn't. Because I don't think they're embarrassed I just or think ashamed that just... of what they're doing. Because you would literally... Men are not going to get up there and say, oh, no, I, I would not want my son to do what... Nah. You, the way you're talking about... All right, Terrence. The way that you will see these women talk about that... Because young Miami not the first one to, to do that. She's not the first like one to do that. I feel like it's unfair. And we'll let the comments decide. We'll let everybody... I don't think it's unfair. I just think it's very lopsided. I think they will... You're majority... saying one thing for the men. But then when it comes to... Everything when that it comes we to say Miami about rapping, women you doesn't have to like... equally apply to men. There Terrence. are some men that it can apply to, but I think but, I was mainly talking about the women. But what you, you're I trying feel to like make what it an everybody about, problem. What you're saying about Doja, well, not, well, not Doja. Uh, what you're saying about Young Miami, you making it seem like her daughter got to grow up and be a city girl. Like, what if she can't, grew up and been a conscious rapper? Why does she even, have to grow up and do that? She's, I don't, you're I'm giving not the saying that. Kids I'm not the saying that. To not do what I'm they not do. talking about the kids. I'm talking about the parents. Young Miami. Does not is not proud of what she's doing so much to the point that she is saying, "Oh, my daughter will never do this." Oh, you know, my daughter's not gonna do this. My daughter's not gonna be like me. I think. Period. I don't give a fuck who you are. If you're a man or woman, saying you don't want your kid to be like you, man, y'all say what y'all want. Morally, y'all say what y'all want. Terrell, say what you want. Make excuses at all you want. I'm not making excuses. I'm keeping it a hundred. But I think we looking at a, 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 and the only reason why I brought it up because I said, damn, you know what? We, we that is a dirty game to be a hip hop artist. You just showed me the art, the 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 thread showing how the hip hop woman has changed mm -hmm. into the sex symbol. Mm -hmm. And it's not even really just hip hop. It's like look at the Janelle Monae's. I got his ass, Terrence. I've been cleaning you up this whole time. I've right been cleaning the nigga up. Would you want your daughter to be a hip hop artist? If she wants to be a hip hop artist, yeah, I wouldn't mind. It depends on, I wouldn't want her to rap about sex, but I'm not going to limit her ability to just being a rapper about sex. And that's my thing. I'm not saying now, that. I'm, I'm not limiting would anybody's that, ability. But would that, yes, you are. You're making it seem like young Miami's you daughter is only going to be All able to grow I up and be a city girl. said is that I think most people agree with young Miami. Most women agree with young Miami and don't want their daughter to rap. Here you come capping and trying to bring everything Terrence, else you have around. have a sister that raps. Does she rap about pussy? No. That's why I said majority of the hip hop artists these days. You trying to bring up the one and dones. Oh, well, what about what about Rhapsody? You think Rhapsody even? Terrence, but that, Terrell, not, of course there's about. the one. There's the one. It's gonna be the the one. You're right. Line them up and ask them. Go I really. Think, you want your daughter to, uh, to be to be like you when you grow up, or you want your daughter? They gonna be like, uh, nah, because I'm just like not even the lake. question, Terrence. You see how he changed the shit. That's not the question that Jason Lee asked. I think her. Ask Meg the Stallion's daughter. Does she want her daughter to be Meg the Stallion? Do you want your daughter to be a stallion? Do you want your daughter to be a hottie? She might say no. Do you want your daughter to grow up and be a hot girl? A hot girl. I would probably look, say no. No, because I'm... Look, That's think what about I do. It. Even if you say no, that's insane. Terrence, no, it's not. All right, let me give you an example. That's insane for you to promote other women to do something you don't want your daughter to be. You don't even want your daughter to do it, now but you got young girls listening to you, Terrence, you right. doing what you do. You're right. You're right. I, we agree there. We agree there. I'm just saying. That's all. That's yeah. my point. Terrence, you, we agree with that. The, the that's, conversation that's over. Not, not what we disagree uh -huh. on. We disagree on the fact that you keep trying to make it a, only a woman thing. Like these I niggas out here. An only woman you thing. literally said this is not a male thing. This is a female. It is a manly thing. female it problem. Is not. I there would are argue some that the niggas, niggas do it. I would argue the niggas do it more. 
Terrell, you're wrong because you're trying to think about the street life. Terrence, this is the thing about your favorite fucking artist. These Future. women do Let not me tell you about. Around. Let me tell you about your boy Future. Do you know Future does, does no drugs? He does zero drugs. He said in the interview, I don't do any drugs for real. Yeah, he's the he, same. He smokes some marijuana. That's it. Mm -hmm. But you'll get on here and have a song called, when well, you talk about Molly Percocet, and this nigga has what? Z uh, three exotic bars and I'm on the Zanny family. Oh, <laughs> you doing all of that, but you don't live that life. If they ask the nigga, do you want baby future to grow up and be Zanny family? Do you want him to be free band gang? He's going to say no. And yes, Terrell, you have the I'm one. I'm cooking the nigga. You have one rapper. There are thousands of rappers, and you just using the drug rapper to prove a point. Female hip hop is generally, mainly about sex. Do you think Kendrick would want his son to grow up and be a rapper? I don't think so. The way the niggas are you kidding me? Have you, heard hip, have you heard hillbillies? How do you think I'm gonna be with Crew? If I don't have a son, come on, Crew, you take this touch. <laughs> oh yeah. What do you say? <laughs> oh damn, I'm about to chill. Something about this shit getting real. Go on, nephew. Come on, what? Messy. I'm <laughs> getting off the stage. <laughs> Don't bring my right fucking now, son into this, Terrence. Don't bring my son come on, into this nephew. bullshit. Come on, nephew. Come on, come on. We do the reaction, nephew. Come on, let's do the deal like this. Come on, move them hits, nephew. Cause your uncle don't want to do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> I cooked the nigga. I cleaned the nigga up. The nigga was saying in the comments. He. What? What did the? What did the women say? Drag, fellas. This is one like when you try to tell your girl that you just like when she get white polish and then she turn it into you just not liking her nails at all. That's not it at all. That's not it at all. All I simply and you said also, was I feel like the women community would not be promoting their craft to the next women that they themselves raise. And this nigga Terrell wants to say, well, but what about the men? What about the men? Because you I feel like men I wish you are in the same category. I wish you would have left it and general. they do not feel the same. You should have left it general. There are some. That's like me saying, look, women don't know how to uh, communicate in relationships. It's like, all right. You getting ready to get a... <laughs> I am, though. 100%. You gonna get one. Oh, we've been thinking about getting a tattoo for a minute, Terrell. Terrence, don't go out there and do no bullshit. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, wild, I'm a wild guy. Wild thing. I would get a matching tattoo with somebody quick. I don't give a fuck. And I'm gonna get, cut, get it covered up. Because guess what? You could die with the person that you with right now. You could die. Oh, yeah. That's a, I like that. I like that quote. You could die with the person you with right now. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. So my thing is this, you standing right next to me, I'm standing right next to you, I put that ink on me no problem, I don't care. Because low key, shut up Terrell, let me fucking say it. this. Shut the fuck up. I'm the one that brought the shit shut up. Shut up. Go ahead. Spaz on a nigga. Because I'm saying some real shit. You just rap for a long time about some bullshit, go ahead. Cook the nigga, go ahead. Say this shit with this nigga talking. Go Cause ahead. Because this nigga's not on my vibe. I'll get that shit tatted, y'all. I don't know about y'all. Maybe we talk about that now. I'll, I'll get somebody tatted on me. I will too. 100%. I'll get I'll get a tattoo quick. I'm about to get quick. My, I'm definitely gonna get my girl tatted. I'm gonna get my son and my girl tatted. I'll get my girl name tatted somewhere reckless. You're oh. you're. I think fellas, don't listen to this and just think that your girl that you've been with for a couple of months, you can get a tattoo. Live. Wait until y'all got some years. Live your life. Cause look, wait until y'all got. You die. Okay. You died. At the, at the end of the and day. And you were waiting. You ever thought about that? Yeah, y'all, don't listen to that. That's not good advice. You will never give my son advice when I'm not in the room. I need to be there to chaperone the advice. I need to have closed caption on the advice you give. I give my Subtitles. own son advice. I don't need to give your son advice. You give him advice. Good luck. You do need to give him advice. It's your oh, I don't want to give it. I don't want to give chaperoned advice. When you're saying bullshit like that, I don't want him to have a bullshit? girlfriend. Bullshit? I don't want him to have a girlfriend for two months and then get a tattoo of her because I might die tomorrow. No, we're not thinking about you dying tomorrow, nigga. You're going to live until you're 90. Terrell. You do not First leave off, to I live your life. I wouldn't tell my fucking nephew, who's probably young as fuck, if he was this age, if he's 20, 22, like the niggas that listen to your podcast. Get that tattoo, bro. Get that tattoo. You can get it covered up. Don't get it on your... Don't get it, record, don't get it reckless like me. But I say, I wish I would have got my girl that I was with when I was 18 tatted. I wish I would have got my girl that I was with a couple years, four or five years ago tatted. I wish I would have got a tattoo for every one of my relationships. But you got to explain. Because. You talking about getting the name or just getting a symbol that both of y'all have? I'm talking about. Different. Look, I'm really talking about the act. I wish we would have made that move. Because that is a real move. Let me tell y'all something. Some of y'all think this is so ridiculous me talking about. 
because you are too scared to even post your significant other on social media. And I'm not so, and I'm not throwing shade at you. Because you know I'm why I don't do it. I'm not throwing shade at you. Because I'm not talking right. again. Not talking again. Personal. Not personal. Uh, look, I'm go not ahead, talking about you. Because I have a response. I'm not talking about you. I have a response. But you hear me, though. I don't hear you. Some of y'all probably do think getting a tattoo is ridiculous. What does that have to do with them posting their significant other and keeping creeps out of their lives? Some of y'all don't think that you can feel a way about somebody to the point of getting a tattoo. It has nothing to do with how long y'all been together. Some of y'all can be with a motherfucker for two straight years and you got tattoos. You still won't get a tattoo of that motherfucker. And you spent two, three years of your life with this person. Because and you still, let me get it all, Terrell. You still don't feel comfortable enough. You ever thought about that? You don't feel comfortable enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't even say this shit. Y'all make me uncomfortable. Comfortable. You don't feel comfortable enough. To get a tattoo that's, with the person you've been with for three Terrence, years. That's not an issue. You sound like an idiot. Bad take after bad take. All I'll say is... You're saying that the people the that people don't feel that comfortable get getting a tattoo tattoos, with somebody they've been with for three years or two years, yep. something's wrong with that? Not something wrong with that. I'm just I don't know if I'm going to be with this motherfucker. You was in a relationship since you want to take shot. And let me tell y'all something. The people... And you heard what I just said. Everybody don't move in a relationship like me. And that's why some of my relationships did not work out. Because I feel like if we standing right here and me and you is, is, is locked in, then this is it. I wish I would have got tattoos in all my old relationships because I would have been living for that relationship only. I spent a lot of time in my old relationships thinking that I might not even be with her. So a tattoo idea might not be in my mind. Or, oh, you know what? I might fuck with shorty that I've been eyeing all the way over there. Might not even happen. So my thing is this. I wish... I was not thinking about all the other bullshit and I was living in that moment. That's why I said, y'all, this can't see Terrell. He's a nosy nigga. He reads text messages out loud. Now it's a podcast topic. That was a shocking thing to read. How about it wouldn't be as shocking if you was paying attention to your device and not mine. It would, it would be shocking if I look at it. If I get your phone for that, I'm sure I'd be shocked at all the messages. First of all, I have to respond. Phone. Let me respond to a couple of things you said. First of all, fellas, let me just give y'all some advice, especially when you live in the public. Ah. When you got 30,000 motherfuckers that follow you, right? And 300,000 motherfuckers on YouTube that want content. Keep your significant, we're not getting keep it. your significant <laughs> other off your social media unless they would like to be on there, especially if they didn't sign up for what you signed up for. When me and wifey got together, she didn't even know I had a YouTube. Sir, are you telling the same Hold shit that we heard before? Hold on, wait. She didn't even know we had a YouTube. So the reason, because there's a lot of people, bro. Do you know how many followers? Sorry, requests? but you know we talked about this already. You talking about Terrence, something different. Don't I let you get your shit I'm off? Letting you go. I'm just letting you, you know let you're me talking rock. about something completely you, different than the point. I'll let you, I said I had to respond to a few things. Uh, she didn't sign up for it, and so I said I'm never, I'm not going to subject you to the to the life that I live, because motherfuckers are weird. I don't give a fuck how many times people say, show this, show the baby's face, show your girl. I will not, because they don't want that life. She already got 30. Nigga, I get new. that. I'm that's not, not the you. question. That's not I'm not that, talking to you. That's never been she a conversation, Terrell, about her okay. wanting it. This is, this it's is, not about if she wants it or not. This is my point. She already got like 30, 30 new follower requests because people are just weird. So that's the reason why you don't have to, you not posting your significant other has nothing, no, no reason, no, it doesn't always have to be you're not comfortable posting them or whatever. Never said. Getting that. a, you just said, you did say something like that. You did. Getting a tattoo with somebody. I'm not opposed to getting a matching tattoo with somebody. Getting somebody, y'all getting each other name on y'all. You wish you would have had everybody. Because that, that's my question. I wish I would have been living in. You wish you would have got everybody name on you. This person, I wish I would have been person. living in the moment enough to. I don't think do you. I, don't, I think you just potting. I'm not. I, I really wish I would have did it. Really do. Even if it was some shit that was just a part of both our life at that time and that's just what it was let's say you and your girl was always going to the monument right and y'all met at the monument and then y'all just met at the monument every day and then look let's say you get a monument tatted on your arm this your life you went to the monument yeah you was with that girl that's at different. that one point but you got a monument tatted on your arm and guess what let's say she got that same monument tat both of y'all that's a part of both of y'all life and when you get older and you, and you mature, 
That's different though. T. You'll you said see, tatted on you. You'll see, and it ended up be tatted on me. No, we said getting they. I, I would never get said my, nothing said about I would get names. My significant I said other I wish, tatted. I said, what I would, does that mean? I would get. All right, bet. Let's say you got their name. That's because that's what we were talking about. Let's you, say you said I would name. get them tatted. I would get a tattoo. I kept saying a tattoo. You said you're gonna get a tattoo. I said, yeah, I'm gonna get a tattoo. A matching tattoo, y'all. I'm not talking about their name. Y'all don't have to do that, but I say get a tattoo, y'all. Maybe not her name because you're gonna have to cover up another name. And that's what you said, Terrence. Terrell, this whole thing have not only been about names. But you said I would get them tatted and then I would get it covered up. That's what you said. I would get it tatted, I would get it covered up, I would get a tattoo. I was all right, bet. Let's just y'all say, see how he's changing it. It's not only been about names, but if you want to just make it about names, because I've been saying tattoo. We haven't Terrence, just been I saying names. You, I asked you, I said. Terrell, that's not only been about names. You haven't said name tatted. You mean name tatted. I would have told you, no, a matching tattoo. I would get a tattoo with somebody. Would you get a matching tattoo? Yeah. With somebody that Would I'm... you go back and get matching tattoos with all your what's names if you could have? No. Right. Because you don't live I your life not. like me. For me, I feel like when you live with your heart on your sleeve and you really do, then I feel like, you know, I'm not getting tattoos for the relationship. I wish I would have just been more open with my feelings and how I felt and been more open to doing shit like that. You would be surprised how many people walking around this earth with tattoos of other people they was in relationships and with. And they all regret And they them. were able to reach. They, don't, they, they might regret the ink. So you, why would you do that? Because it's, look, it's permanent, but, you're, but it, it's fuck it. This is my thing. It's permanent, but it's, it's fuck permanent, it. It's permanent, right. but it's not permanent. These days, you can get a tattoo covered up. Man, that is I'm not, not, look, it's ridiculous for me to say I want a tattoo for every joint that I've been with. Because that looks like seven tattoos. But I mean, I would. You ask me if would I get somebody tatted one hundred percent, and it don't gotta be three, four years. Absolutely not. Give me three good months. That's stupid. I might put. I might would get you, want, you on the. Would you want your son to do that? Terrell, my son live his own. Would you want your son life. to do that? You if want he, your if, son if, if, to do that? I want my that? son to be just like me. You want him to get a girl, his girlfriend, a three months tatted? Terrence, be honest. Have a man time if my, conversation. If my son, if your son, if my son, look, twenty two years, years old. 22, 23, 24. Let's have a man time conversation. Your yeah. son is 20 years old. He's been with this girl for six months. They say he's going to get a matching tattoo. You done been in hella relationships. You what know, y'all get? You know young relationships don't always pan out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're it, young. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown ass man he's now, though. Si yeah, but he's six. He's, he's, getting, he's talking about going to get a matching tattoo. Yep. We both going to get each other. We both going to get a, 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 a snail. Each other's first initial. On our wrist. Okay. You would tell your son you was okay with him to do that. I would ask him if he's sure 100% positive you want to do that. Because it's, it's it's, this is permanent ink. It's not going to come off. So if you oh. get this, this means you're going to have to get it covered up if you don't like her. So you would have some hesitation. I would have hesitation, yeah. It's my son. You would have some hesitation about your son doing what you do. Yes. Yes. But young Miami <laughs> can't have hesitation. Baby, the nigga in. Young Miami can't have hesitation. We're well, gonna be the city girl. I'm tired of the nigga. I baited him right in. Hook, line, reel. <laughs> Bitch ass nigga. I know what's funny when somebody <laughs> think they made a great point. <laughs> he think he made a great point. <laughs> when did this shit work? What the fuck? He said the same. Oh shit. How the fuck is that the same? Look. I'm not ashamed of my tattoos. Young Miami is ashamed of the shit she's doing. Oh, hell nah. I'm a whore. Oh, you want your daughter to be that? <laughs> <laughs> this is my thing. Come on, T. Yes, I want my son to get tattoos. But I definitely got to get Clarence to see if he's good on it. You try oh to my bait God. me into Terrell. Young, I'm not saying my son can never get a tattoo. That would be me doing what Miami doing. Let's move on. I did want to talk about this. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield went on a shop. And this is going to be real quick. He went on a shop and he was talking about how he got his first check. He was 20 years old and it was $130,000. And he said, all I wanted was this, um, a real nice car. So he went to the dealership with a duffel bag of the money and said, this is exactly how much it is for me to get out the door with the car that I want. This is full price for it. He didn't have no insurance. He didn't have no credit. In his, no, he didn't have no credit built yet. Nothing. And he drove off. He said, I drove off the lot broke. And he said, the next week, I was worried about 
um, how I was going to pay my rent. And I realized, damn, like if I would have had an OG or somebody tell me like, yo, that's not the way you want to spend your money. That would have been very helpful. And the only reason why I bring that up is because it was a lot of people in the comments saying sometimes you got to fuck up some money to really understand how to keep it or how to spend it the right way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is wrong. We fuck some money up in college, our living expense. We've told that story on this podcast a thousand times. But I don't think the right thing to tell people is that you got to fuck some money up. I don't think real people that have money for real don't teach their kids that. I feel like that's something that exists in communities where people don't always have a lot of money because your parents don't know how to manage money, so you don't. So instead of them realizing that they never learned, so you didn't learn, they mask it in some bullshit lesson like, oh, well, sometimes you got to fuck up money. And it's the same thing with rich black folks sometimes that will say, or even certain rich folks, period, that'll say shit like, I'm going to make my kids work so they know they got to earn everything they get. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Black folks will say that when we get money. Jackie Chan is doing that. I don't think that's the right thing to do. And I think the powers that be, people that really have money, they don't make their kids do this bullshit because I understand building character and building, you know what I'm saying, like responsibility and not just thinking you're going to have everything. But I think if any place should be safe, it should be your parents. You know what I was thinking about, too? Like, you're going to present war to your child versus refuge. Why not? It's be better to teach your kid, nah, this is how you spend money. Because I, I, like I was saying, in, in certain communities, they don't do that. I think him saying you got to fuck up money in order to get some, in order to whatever. That, he didn't say that. The, the common people saying. saying it. I don't agree with that's that. That's kind of what he's saying. I don't agree that you have to, but it happens. I think that's like saying like, you got to get robbed to understand. No, it ain't. You going to have to you protect gotta, yourself. You, sometimes you do fuck your money up in the beginning, and you then that's how you learn. Getting robbed is different. I, but to me, it's kind of like... Getting robbed is how you, you learn take to a, not go to a certain area at night, you know? But or, it's the same thing to me, because you got to take a big L, put yourself in a hole in order to learn, where other people don't have to learn that way to still learn the exact same thing you learn. I'll, get, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. There are different ways, definitely different ways to learn. I'll also say, I think this story where you say sometimes you got to fuck some money up, I agree with that, but not in a sense with this. I agree that you got to fuck some money up when you first get it, meaning you was young and let's say you got $10,000 when you was young and you just mismanaged it, you know? you Oh, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to have this and I'm going to have some money left to do this and then, look, I'm going to do this and, you know, or you 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 invest in the wrong thing or you, you buy something thinking that you was going to be able to do this with it and you didn't. That's what they mean when they say sometimes you got to fuck some money up to know, all right, I'm going to spend my money better this time. Lakeith Stanfield going in this joint talking about this is all the money and then I drove off the lot broke. He was 20. You didn't fuck some money up. You was just dumb as shit. Like, why the fuck are, why, why would I, even at 20, I'm a, I, I knew not to go and spend every single dollar that I have or majority of it on a car. I don't think that got nothing to do no with your upbringing. You just are dumb. But you see, he still, to me, that comes from how you was brought up. Nobody ever taught him, which is consistent in our community, about that. His, Nobody really taught us either, bro. Tans, you are crazy. If you, you know, we what? didn't have a bunch of financial conversations. You we knew didn't. not to spend all your money on we, one thing from not having money. We right? didn't, but we also blew thirty grand in college. Yeah, we but, fucked the but, money up first. That and then was learned. not us taking thirty grand to go buy bullshit and then walking off in one day. But we your, fucked up. Me and Terrell did fuck up thirty grand in college, but. That was us thinking that we were managing the money right, and then we ended up seeing that we weren't. And think about it. We fucked that money off, but we ain't fucking up that bad. We were just supposed to have a little bit more left over than, well, than we, nothing. Right. But, but now, you would, your, your, your son wouldn't fuck up 30 grand in his life because of what you learned. And you would teach him. And you know what? Not You're to. You're 100% right. You know? However, my son, I, all I'm saying is, I just think going up there and spending all of your money on a car and you saying you drove off the lot broke, that was a little bit more than fucking the money up, bro. That was just like a dumbass thing to do. Like even Shaq to this day says it was, it was an idiotic thing I did. I wasn't paying attention. 
I got the money and just bought me a truck, my dad a truck, and then I said, oh, shit, where's the money? Uh -huh, oh, no, he didn't taxes. say where the money. He just didn't think that he was going to have to pay at the end of the year. Uh -huh. He think he just owed his money. That's fucking your money up to me. But do you think that that's... You, but think Being about broke it. in a nice car, running but out of you the lot, about, is like kind of dumb. You also got, you got to think about it, though. People that have money that raise their kids to take over their businesses and stuff, they don't have their kids go through that stuff because they teach them. That's Terrell, the biggest point. Keep making excuses for that dumbass move the, if you want. You're right, not, though. I'm, it is a stupid move. I'm not saying it's not. But what I'm saying is we're not about to get in the comments and make it seem like this is some lesson that you have to learn. I don't agree with that. I agree with... You don't agree with fucking your money up. Sometimes you got to fuck some money up. I just think sometimes... To learn. I think we can... You can teach some... I think the biggest lesson is seeing what happened to Lakeith and saying, all right, but I'm not going to let my kid go through that. As opposed to subscribing and liking the comment that says, sometimes you got to fuck it up. Nah. You know what? You shouldn't. And this is what I'll, get, this is what I'll say in response to what you're saying, because you're mm -hmm. right. But the bad thing is... That response that you don't like is an exact response to the situation that you're speaking on in the black community where we don't have people to teach us. So we literally rely on fucking up the money first and then figuring it out, which is fucked up. So you're right. We shouldn't have a, a culture of it being us fucking up the money and then learning. It, we should create a culture around being taught from everybody else's mistake. We got yeah. MC Hammer been out for 25 years. We should all know that mistake. You yeah. know, that's true. And you know what? I think sometimes we can be reactionary based on result as opposed years. to process. Specifically, like even this new generation of parents. Your kid got bad grades. You see, I mean, your kid got bad grades in school, so you cut all his dreads off. You know what I'm saying? Or you, he's getting bad grades because he spent too much time. On, bad boy. Look, he spent too much time on that game and not studying, so I'm going to take the game. What sounds like the right thing to do. He's not focused. He's on a game, whatever. He need to be studying. You know what? This dude said this on TikTok and it stuck out to me because he said, did you even teach him how to study? And I said, damn, you know what? I was terrible at studying. Nobody ever told me how to study. Like, yo, you need to write this down this way. Study this this way. But I'm going to get in trouble for not doing it, but you never really, nobody ever sat down and showed me that. That's why I said we, there's that, but then there's also I'm just, just, I'm just saying it's a different situations where motherfuckers do know how to study and just aren't. But how you know, okay, but if, if you being do bad, know, that's different. Cause I do think some kids are just better than others. I think some kids need the belt and some kids don't. I do think there are some kids that need they ass whooped. You need a whooping. No, they don't. You need a whooping as a parent. You need a whooping. Nine times out of ten, when people whoop their kids, it's for some shit that they should get an ass whooping for. Oh, shit. He cut up all the curtains. I'm whooping his ass. Where were you? What were you doing? Oh, I was on all the right. phone. I was on the phone. Okay. Not watching him. You should get your ass whooped. What about when you told them not to do something and they do it anyway? I can't wait to see what you're going to do with my man, K. Just wait. He's going to be He's gonna be shocked. He's going to be the guy at the end of the... He's going to be the guy at the... When the team loses the championship and all y'all kids are crying and can't get it together and your son is <laughs> sniffling, he's going to be the one to be like, the Samuel Jackson, we straight, we're going to come back and get him next year. Remember when the kid went and lifted the dude's chin? That's going to be my son. Your kid going to be the one with the kid with the head back. Nah. My son going to be the one put his head up. Your, your kid going to be the one thinking about a million things. Exactly. That's what I want him to do. Think. Something your uncle don't do. My uncle, your uncle is smarter than your father. All right. Crew. That's not true. At all. Why are there so many women on my For You page and my Twitter? I really do not get it, y'all. I don't be, I'm not one of them niggas that sit on Instagram and look at a whole bunch of women. Like, yo, I'm letting y'all know. Some of y'all are hitting the algorithm and just popping. Some of y'all, I'm not planning on seeing some of y'all. I think your For You page does reflect what you look at. And if you look at most of these video, I'm not trying to fuck some of y'all relationships up. But if any of my couples listen to this, this is one thing that I did recently. My girl had me uh, screen share and go to my uh, explore, explore page and just go like this and just scroll up. Fellas, my heart was beating. I said, hold up. 
I don't see nothing crazy pop up, but fellas, you want your heart to beat? Because look, the explore page is just a random thing. It is. And then the, look, if she going to say- She asking me questions about- update. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing a lot. What do you mean? What are you seeing? <laughs> 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 we scared sharing my screen. I'm nervous as fuck. Well, oh, 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 yeah. You know, fitness. You know, I be looking at fitness. So that's why you see the fitness. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm looking at- Look at mine. Fashion. You trying to- <laughs> I just updated. So real updated. Okay, what, look, this would look woman at the top. A couple. Look, woman, I tried to get the baby. couple thing off. That shit don't work. A couple. Oh, whatever. Look, fuck that. Look, fitness. Woman. Fitness. Woman. Terrence, you skipping all the fitness elephant. You think right your there? woman gonna say fitness? Oh, I see some fitness. Your woman baby is looking shit. For I got a bunch of baby shit. You know what I was told? There are some for you pages where there aren't any women. Some men were showing their for you pages and there weren't any women. Sorry. Come on, y'all. What that's do I look real, like? That's not realistic. It's going to be women up. Here. Sorry. It would be, <laughs> to me, that would be more concerning than anything. That's that what I say. That. I said, imagine you get on my phone. I said, imagine I went to my Explore page and you see a whole bunch of these niggas. A bunch of men. A bunch of men. And you know what? When you in the fitness, that can happen. But there's got to be women still. in there somewhere. I said, you should feel nothing but remorse seeing some biddies on my For You page along with some of the other shit. Can you imagine if that's you, you see... Lighting. Look, imagine you see this, bro. Look, they ain't even fitness niggas. This niggas that's just like this. This niggas, look, look, niggas that just perform. Yeah. <laughs> if a nigga tells you he's a performer and he don't say that he make music, get away from that nigga. <laughs> because look, them the type... Look, you know what I be thinking about, y'all? Remember on... uh, You remember uh Euphoria? Everybody seen season one Euphoria. Went through bruh phone and seen all them jumps. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yo, you should be happy to see his girls on my joint. You know, like, yeah, what if you would have seen a whole bunch of bruhs? That's still gaslighting. And now when I say I'm about to go play, I'm about to, look, I'm about to go play basketball with the guys. You're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go get on the game. Be back. Speaking of, rewatch the Striking Vipers episode of Black Mirror. And we're going to get to the movie suggestion in a week. Why did you rewatch that? I don't know why I re rewatched that. My girl and her family was watching it. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just put this joint on while y'all watch it. And look, that's one of them joints I said, I'm going to put it on up here. Uh -huh. And then when the joint came on, I ended up watching that joint. And I said, you know what? This was re this was ridiculous. That was a ridiculous episode. We ain't going to get into it. it. Was that was absolutely ridiculous. They met up and they met up to see if they like if they was going to like it. For them two to Yeah, nah. Gonna put out his album. It's going to go it's going to go number 2 with uh 80k units, they say, and I think that's dope. For him, I'm happy for him, and I think it just speaks to the fact that street niggas have to realize that y'all are outnumbered by people that are not in the life or just don't care or don't follow that code, and I think that speaks to the success of the album. A lot of people don't give a fuck. It was people saying that we were, we were cooked if y'all let a rat go. Y'all really just are really the ones that are cooked because nobody, we don't really give a fuck. The album was great. Young Thug just tweeted the... Uh, the artwork for Young Thug's album is going around, and I think it's going to be special. It's mm -hmm. Apparently, it's going to be called Business is Business. I, it comes out tonight. I know it's going to be special. We probably won't listen to it until next week. But I'm excited for it, man. Music is starting to kind of... Yeah, definitely. 100%. You know yeah. Feel like we got some momentum. Shout out to everybody that joined the Patreon or is already a Patreon and saw that gunner reaction that we did. It's up there. 100. And we got a couple more that's getting ready to drop this weekend. And then next week, we'll listen to the gun. I still got AMT coming. Well, we got, look, we got the Dirt coming, and we got the Across the Spider-Verse reactions yeah. coming. Dope. We can definitely say that. Why not? We shot it. Yeah. And Those are coming. Uh, the Thug will be next. We got Utopia on the way. For sure. Man, I got to be so dope. Attack on Titan. Everybody that signed up for the District 9, trust me, I'm back this weekend. I just had to, we had to get some music stuff done. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm back this weekend, so. We back because I need to finish season three so I can get to, uh, I'm sorry, season two so I can get to season three and four. Same. And the vlog's going to return with the... AOT should be back this Man, they weekend. can't say we don't be working. They can't say we don't Come work. Come on, man. Look, vlogs, Come we the niggas talking, right? The niggas talking. We got too many avenues. Pod every nah, we haven't been we haven't been working for real because I, I get some of the smoke mm. that we've been getting. Like somebody was like, I wish y'all would give, and shout out to bro who might even, you might even randomly be like, damn, he saw that. But he was like, I wish y'all would give the same attention to young boy that y'all do to Ghana. Because he said, young boy be having some solid projects too. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take that smoke. I've been taking a lot of smoke from a lot of people. But I said, you know, I'm going to take that smoke. Because me and Terrell be sitting in here listening to young boy. I love his last we be, album. We be listening to young boy. And we just do not listen to the nigga's album. I know. At one point, he was dropping a lot. And it was like, ah, oh, this nigga dropping a million. He but, dropping 30 track albums every two months or something like that. But I, we definitely have kind of, you know, 
Well, with K Man on the way, it's been a, it's been kind of a whatever. But we definitely getting back to the shit. So it feels good. Yeah, at one hundred percent. And just to be listening to the new music, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For real. My movie suggestion of the week is going to be two of them. First is going to be Black Mirror. If you haven't watched Black Mirror, at least watch the first episode of the new season. It's called uh, Joanne is Awful. I want y'all to see that episode because that episode gives a very interesting look at like subscription services, and it's it's one of those tongue in cheek. It's a it's a funny thing for Netflix themselves to do this episode out the gate. I want y'all to see that. Joanne is awful. That's going to be Black Mirror on Netflix. And my number two, randomly, is going to be Bad Boys 2 on Netflix. I randomly put that on just because I was cleaning up. And let me tell y'all, what the fuck was wrong with Martin in that jump? What are you talking about? We didn't talk about this, but it was all over the TL. Chris Tucker, Martin Lawrence, a movie versus, right? Uh -huh. For some reason, I put on Bad Boys 2, and I watched it with a different lens. And I want y'all to watch it for the same reason. Just watch Bad Boys 2 and understand Bad Boys is not be a better franchise than Rush Hour. It's not. And Bad Boys 2 is actually very bad. That's why I'm telling y'all to watch it. It's been on my, it's been on my movie suggestion week uh, list. Ever since I put it Very on. bad? It is bad. Bad, bad Boys 2 is great, two Terrence. is bad. And you know what I'm going to tell you, Terrell? I'm going to ask you this one question. I don't know whose choice it was for this, but I watched Bad Boys 1 when I edited the podcast last week. So when I put on Bad Boys 2, it was just to continue the one, right? I'm going to keep it 100, y'all. Mm -hmm. Rush Hour 1 and Rush Hour 2 are both gold. Golden. They are. Rush Hour 1 and 2 are golden. Bad Boys 1 is gold. Bad Boys 2 is bad. Why? And the only reason I'm going to ask y'all the question is this when y'all watch. What happened to Marcus? What happened to bro? Think about it. The whole movie, Bad Boys 2, all of a sudden, Marcus is upset about something. It's like, yo, have you told have you talked to have you talked to Mike yet? Have you told Mike? And he's like, nah, I haven't told him. He's not telling Mike he want to retire. He's telling Mike he wants to get a new partner. The whole movie, I'm telling y'all, it's so bad. The writing is so bad. Martin, the whole movie just does this. Hey, look, we don't really know what's going to happen. Hey, look, I might not be your partner for long. Hey, look, I might not be your partner. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, they never Terrence, the first, what happened. The first movie, the first movie was a lot. The nigga was, <laughs> he saved Mike's life. He was the top cop, and this is what y'all don't get. Martin Lawrence was the draw for Bad Boys. It was not Will Smith. It was Martin Lawrence featuring Will Smith. Go look at the Bad Boys poster. It says Martin Lawrence, Will Smith. And if you think look that at Bad that's Boys not purpose, poster. if you think that's not purposeful, and, and I'm glad you said that. Look at the Bad Boys 2 poster. And I'm glad you Will said Smith that. Will Smith open shirt. And I'm glad you said that. Because Martin Lawrence was here. By the time they did two, I feel like Will Smith was on a fucking. He took off. Will Smith took off. Y'all remember Michael Bay saying he watched that, 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 that picture of Will Smith running in one, and he said, this is a movie star. He's going to be a movie He's star. He's going to be a yep. movie star. He didn't say that about Martin, who was running in that same way. <laughs> you know? And all I'm going to say is I mean, I'm not shitting on my man Money, uh, Marty Marr. He is a legend. I think the writers took bad boys down a drain when they made Mark, when they made Marcus this unhappy partner with Mike, go rewatch Bad Boys too. I'm like, yo, the whole chemistry of them is thrown off, and it's making it seem like they got this fake ass beef. Yeah. But their chemistry was so great. I'm gonna just end it with this. My movie suggestion. I'm gonna end it with this to end on the Chris Tucker Martin thing. Is all I wanted to say. I will say. Okay, let me say this. And I'm gonna let you go. Okay, you go ahead. I think Chris Tucker in Bad Boys. Would have been better than Martin in Bad Boys. No way. No way. No way. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because look at how fucking well Chris Tucker did Detective Carter. And imagine they sent Detective Carter to work with Mike. Oh, it would have been so good. There's no. It would it not. Would, Bad Boys would have been so good. Look, Chris Tucker is. Carter's, look, Chris Tucker's married. He got Chris a wife. Tank. He got kids. Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker needed. To go alongside the language barrier, can whoop ass, but he's kind of straight line, and I'm the one that's not cop in Jackie Chan. He in in uh Detective Lee. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
I don't think that he would have did well with Will. I think Martin. Now you put Martin, Martin with, Jack. with Jackie. That would have worked. Been good. That would have worked. They both would have worked. That would have worked because we seen Martin in National Security do it with with, with Hank, Rafferty. Yeah, Hank Rafferty. Now this is my <laughs> thing. This is what I say. Rock and he did it nothing to lose. He did it in fucking Blue Streak. He did it a yeah. couple times. This is what I say. I do think Rush Hour one and two. Even I, we did a Witches Battle. We did a uh, we did. I don't even know what one got to go on this years ago. I think Rush Hour is well written. Mm-hmm. It's better written than the. Because think about it, the first Rush Hour, you get the little girl and June Tile. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the fucking. And, and the bomb, and you owe me money, and I need this money. Yeah. Back. You come from that to the second one with Ricky Tan, and the fucking. They go and over. That shit was. No, just and it was so perfect because you got. I'm, you know, and this, you know, this, I'm the best detective in LA. I'm, yeah. the, I'm, I'm Crenshaw. My family from Crenshaw. I'm LA. But you got this person coming from Hong Kong coming over here to me. And two, now you got LA's finest going to Hong Kong. It was yes. perfect. It was perfect. And it was he perfect. told him we was on vacation. Remember he said, Yeah, I'm on vacation. You told me we was on vacation. That shit was great. Bad Boys 2, when you think about the plot, what is it about? Random ass Gabrielle Union. Johnny sister Tapia. Come out of nowhere, working with Johnny Tapia. Think about it. They literally went and ripped up and killed Johnny Tapia, all his men, to save... Gabrielle Union on some side shit. Terrence no. They dead ass. Gabrielle Union working with the CIA. They said the mission is too is gonna be this this mission is gonna be tough. We're gonna need this. He said, you know what? By the time y'all figure out what to do, my sister's gonna be in a fucking box. Yeah. This is bullshit. And then they went out there and said, fuck it, we about to they go said, ahead and we ride together. We die together. Let's do this shit. Uh-huh. Y'all down the road. We coming with y'all. Look, cop shit, shit could get you killed. They going and saving Gabby's <laughs> little fast ass. She's talking about, look, I'm on, I'm in the what's name, and if you wanna if I wanna get there. Girl, we try, We not saved you in the traffic. First of all, yeah, the, it had some writing holes, but that's just Man. a classic movie. There's not a scene in Rush Hour that's better than the, you know, the the, the Reggie scene at the yes, door. Yes, there is. It ain't, Terrence, it ain't. That's a that's a good verses right there, yeah. We can talk about that five. I didn't mean to stretch out y'all movie suggestion of the week, but I'll let you have it. Hey, look, my movie suggestion of the week is Tyler Perry's The Family That Prays. It's on Netflix. Okay. Uh, it is one of his best. I don't even know why I picked this, but... I don't know why you picked this that. This is 2000, 2008, Alfre Woodard, Sanaa Lathan, Taraji P. Henson, Tyler Perry's in it, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates. Um, they smoked it. It's a great film all the way through. It's one of those ones that you should watch with your girl. If your girl have not seen it, I'm going to try to get my girl to watch it. Yeah. But uh, if your girl haven't seen it, y'all should watch that because it's got like some... Terrell telling you that your girl should see it because it, the, the women in that movie are kind of do dirt. And you get to watch that movie and be like, hey, you see how crazy these nah, women but are? Nah, but it's... Women are women are. And you get to see how <laughs> terrible... What was his name? My man from uh, Sons of Anarchy? What's his name? He played the motherfucking uh, sheriff his in Sons of Anarchy. Is... He played Sanaa Lathan's husband. Rockman Dunbar. He was a terrible nigga in the movie. He was a great his actor. Acting, he's great. Don't oh, acting is great. His yeah. I mean, his okay. character is like. Yeah. I just want for better for you. We want better for him. <laughs> then he, yeah, he he got his towards the end. Mm-hmm. He's the dude that you do feel like, man. Don't let her do you like that. Don't let her fucking do you like that. We all got that friend where it's like, what she make you do? Uh-huh. You tell her ass you do that shit later. You get this nigga yeah. trouble with his wife. Tyler Perry's in a relationship with Taraji in that movie, and it is not. That, 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 that they should have never did that. Tyler shouldn't have been in this. But he had that terrible bush. That's one of them pushover type dudes that I have. You getting in trouble with your girl because you starting to feel like you a little too much him. Your girl be like, don't worry about it. I'll just do it. You be like, I said I'll do it. Yeah, I, this, I got it. I just watched Family of Praise. Leave me alone. That movie is crazy. First of all, Kathy Bates is a legend. Mm-hmm. Alongside another legend who keeps up just honestly the legend, Alfie Wooden. 100. Has Brooklyn. never gotten her flowers, but... Legend. You talk about a face actor, somebody that could turn them tears on. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the one right there. A legend. And that is a legend. Not Cheryl Lee, because she was in Moesha. Ter- Cheryl Lee Ralph is a legend. Cheryl Lee Ralph is a legend. Cheryl Lee Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to say nothing about the NBA? Go ahead. Yeah, we can talk about it. NBA trade talk. Very- it's really just y'all, for real. It ain't nothing else really happened. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Maybe Terrell don't know. Hey, look, shout out to everybody that's tuned into the NBA. It's not a lot. But Chris Tasport seeing it. Wizard. Went to the Celtics. Celtics. The Celtics are sending Marcus Smart to the, to Grizzlies. the Grizzlies, which is a, a great move. Mm. I like. Bradley Bills going to the Phoenix Suns. It hurt my heart. I'm just going to say that. Go ahead. Tim. Okay, go ahead. And y- you know y'all got Tyus Jones. 
We got Tyus Jones from the Grizzlies. Yes, so we now you have Tyus. We, okay. we got Tyus Jones. We got Danilo Gallinari, who's always been a bucket on 2K. <laughs> <laughs> and we got this big center, this white boy, I think. Or maybe he's black. I don't know. He, he had a, a different name. We got a bunch of second round picks as the Wizards. But what do you think about the Grizzlies and Marcus Smart? One thing that I was going to tell you I didn't like is how people are saying, oh, well, you know what? Well, the dude, you ever heard of dude, you ever see the dude Wendy? He'd be on NBA ESPN first take, fat white boy, uh -huh. no facial hair. The one that does it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was like, oh, now they got Marcus Smart. And him and uh, Jay was talking. Uh, what's his name? Jay, Jay Williams. Jay Williams. You see, we trying to figure it out. My now God. that we don't got she's skipping Shannon, you know, we trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, you know, but uh, I really just picked them because I wanted to see what they said. But I didn't like how they was like, Marcus Smart, you know, I'm glad the, the Grizzlies are bringing in a, 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 a veteran. You know, now they're, they finally got an adult in the, they, he said, oh, you know, Steven Adams was in there. He's the only adult in the locker room. Yo, they do need adults over there, bro. They got these young niggas that's trying but to be thugs and trying to. <laughs> if I was a Memphis Grizzly fan, I would. I don't. I, 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 me personally, I don't like the way that they talk about the Memphis Grizzlies. Ja is still. They the big bad. They like. They're like the big bad Grizzlies now. You know what I'm saying? Like they're yeah. like they're going to win games. They're going to win 50 games. And this is my thing that I'll say. Them getting Marcus Smart. And losing Tyus Jones yeah. lets me know that Ja is still the guy. But we got Marcus Smart because, first of all, we, like I, I told you this was going to happen. This isn't games. good for Ja because now, Ja, you out 25 games. If I'm the Grizzlies, I want to win those games. Yeah. Now that I got Marcus Smart, defensive player of the year Marcus Smart, flop artist Marcus Smart. But having him, that's not bad to now have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm interested to see how they're going to – who else they're going to get. You know, to yeah. fill in some of those. those and y'all will notice, I talk a lot about like narratives and not liking certain narratives. I just don't, I just don't like certain narratives that they build. And my thing is like, you're saying this and y'all need to understand how these motherfucking media people, they control the narratives. They're like, the Grizzlies need an adult in the locker room. Yo, they, these dudes that play for the Grizzlies are men. These are boys. They was the number one team in the West for a long time last year. They didn't get there on some kitty shit. John Morant's off the court antics. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You can say we're childish. But they don't have on court childish antics. They've never had a troubled locker room. That's not they've why they never had, had. They've never needed this. People think they need this veteran leader to come in to humble them. Right? When really, I don't think that they need a veteran leader to come in and, and humble them. Because for real, they was winning games and then faced injuries. They literally were winning games and lost mad people to, to injury. People trying to act like the Grizzlies have this age problem and they're these young, they don't give a fuck, they need an adult, and Steven Adams is the only adult. If I'm the Grizzlies, I'm like, yo, we we grown men in this league. We not no fucking boys. And the way you, you see how you just said, but they all these young niggas, they think they thugs. Man, Terrence, think about that's this. this nigga. Draymond Green is a leader. You know what I'm saying? Like, what he does for the locker room, for the bench, for the momentum to drive, like, yeah. is more important than his play. I agree. And so, I think, imagine Draymond was to go play with the Grizzlies and replace uh, yeah. your boy that just uh, got dropped, Dylan Brooks. Right. Now, let me say this real quick. That makes that team not better on the court, per se, but it makes them make... I think he would help them make smarter decisions that would lead to them winning more games on the court. I agree. And don't get me wrong in me saying that I think... Don't get me wrong in me saying this, making it look like I don't like the Marcus Smart move. Because I do. I just don't like the language. I don't like them saying that, oh, they finally got this veteran. To me, it's like, yo, they have a veteran now, and they're getting ready to be trouble because now they have veteran basketball playoff pre veteran playoff basketball presence that's getting ready to be added on like a, old, a, a older guy who can be like yo I was rowdier when I was young but you know what I'm saying we about to win these games I don't think that the only thing that I don't like is not the fact that he got traded it's people saying that the Grizzlies are this young team that they don't just want to be thugs oh we need to get some adults in that locker room yo we was the number one team in the West for a reason last year John Moran's bullshit all was off court. And that's where leadership will come in. And, that, and this is my thing. What the fuck is Marcus Smart going to do? And that's, what I, that's my only thing. Like, what the fuck is he going to do? Marcus Smart, he is a, he a gangster ass nigga too. To me, to me Marcus Smart is going to be a problem on the court with that flopping bullshit. He about to get down there and join that shit. I would love it.
I'm gonna love it. I think that's gonna be dope. You wanna y'all imagine Marcus Smart and John Moran totally dope. They would be like, damn, we thought Marcus this Marcus Smart. <laughs> we thought this nigga was gonna come change shit. Go so ahead, read the rest of it. That's not changing. That's still Josh's team. He just that's Josh. Squad. He's fucking it up because mm-hmm. now look, now you missing 20 games. Because it's not about what you're doing off the court. It's the fact that what you're doing, now you're gonna miss 20 games. And now people are gonna say, look, I don't want that nigga on my team so we can start doing that and miss games. Y'all know what I'm thinking. Marcus Smart, take this gimme year with the uh, Grizzlies and see how that moves. But I think the Wizards need a point guard. And I would take a Marcus Smart in, Smart in D.C. I would. Yeah. I'd take him in D.C. Marcus Smart, Jordan Poole, because we just got Jordan Poole. I'm curious, so you never finished the list. Oh, I never did. Jordan Poole to the Wizards, baby. Mm-hmm. Do you know last year, remember when I said Jordan Poole, I would take him in the Wizards, Terrell? You did say that, Terrence, but after this payoff run... We going to need to have him bounce back with the Wizards. Because if he can't do what he did. Now, that's, good. that's this the thing. You got a good three ball. You got a good somebody that could get to the basket. A oh, great shot he's creator. he's a baller. He's a baller. But he folded he's this year. He's a baller. He Y'all folded same, this year, Terrence. Y'all said the same thing about Kyle Kuzma before we got Kyle Kuzma. And look what he came in D.C. and did. Now he's getting ready to get Buku Bucks. And probably is going to go back to L.A. Do you know that? He might go back to L.A. Or he might go to Phoenix. And I say, you know what? LA, y'all be, y'all be some suckers if y'all take Kyle Kuzma back. I'm sorry. And what's weird about, hold on, wait, what's weird too is on the heels of that Kuzma trade, I'm not Kuzma trade, but the pool trade, you send Chris Paul to the Golden State Warriors to what? Come off the bench for Steph? That's what I don't get. That's one thing that I do not get. Say, hey, look, when they said Chris Paul sent to deal for Warriors, the most unrealistic thing went through my head. <laughs> a swap, a swap, trade for, for Steph. <laughs> and then I thought, of course not. <laughs> We're going to get Kaminga. I said, bet they gave us pool and Kaminga. Nope. Nope. We got pool. But I'm cool with that because I don't want to be the Chris Paul team. I honestly think we are getting ready to see something oh so dangerous. <laughs> oh so dangerous. <laughs> if we stay. It's not like he reading a. Because uh, we're talking sports and I'm on a podcast. <laughs> and we trying to read the R.L. Stein book. We about to see something oh so dangerous with CP3 coming off. The, if he was really coming off the bench, God, can you imagine, nigga? That's like somebody you ever play my team. Y'all, y'all play my team. You know how somebody cooking you with the ninety nine Jordan, and then they finally sub him out, and here comes the ninety eight T Mac or the ninety nine Kobe. You said I don't get no break. It's the same thing. You'll be playing a nigga that got 99 Steph Curry. Damn. Bye. Everybody who plays my team knows this. Bye. First subs coming in. <laughs> Unless bro got the automatic. Oh, look, he got automatic subs. Are you going to play with the same starting five the whole game? Either way, first dead ball, you're like, bah. This motherfucker cooking me with Steph. And now here comes the Galaxy Opal CP3. Nothing I can do. <laughs> if they can manage that in real life. Bro, that might be nasty. Chris Paul is older, though, and he is not what Steph is at 30-whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think Chris Paul is in his last years. You know? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 what you're sleeping on is that Tyus Jones trade. Tyus I'm Jones held that, that Grizzlies team down when Ja was out, and I love Tyus Jones. I like Tyus Jones. Look, that's how we looking. Tyus Jones, Jordan Poole, if he stays or resigns, cool. <laughs> y'all need to figure out who's going to replace Chris Stats. All I'm going to say is this, y'all, and I'm going to tweet this. I said I was staying off at of 2K. But now that Bill is off my Wizards and Porzingis is gone, that my career getting ready to be crazy. <laughs> I'm the, hey, look, I'm the face of the city. <laughs> I'm the face of my city. Do y'all know how many years I have not made a a, a shooting guard on 2K because I always be like, all right, it's going to be Bill. We need so-and-so, Bill, me. I'm either the point guard or the big or the three. I'm shooting guard. It's my fucking team. Oh, get that 2K. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, they're they cooking up that Madden. Madden come out in a couple months. Not a couple months, but two or three months. Hey, look, they have been dead silent. EA has been dead silent. Because guess what? Y'all got y'all ass whooped for this last Madden. Bad. Worse than they have ever got their ass whooped about Madden not changing. Think about it. It's year over year. It's like, Madden, damn, Madden make the same game. Madden make the same game. Last year was like, all right, this shit is ridiculous. 
Bitch is really the same. So we're going to see what y'all cooked up. And I'm hearing it's a whole bunch of nothing. I'm about to tell you. It's, they know they don't have any competition. Nah, but this is the thing. NCAA. Think about it. NCAA, what, what, whatever. Not NCAA, but something 2K. 2K football or whatever. All-American football or whatever. They did get that whatever release and they making a game. It's going to come out in like a year or two. And oh, that's shit. why people are like, yo, y'all got a couple years to get it together before. Soon as you uh-huh. get some comp, we're going to say, oh, I'm playing this. And look, we just watched the XFL championship, right? The Rock out there on the field. They're going to have a game one day. And if, and if the game play different, Madden will learn very soon. Okay, bet. let's say this game play different, but we can create a player and it's, it's way better. Mm-hmm. We will play that. You know how many niggas still play NFL 2K7? With T.O. on uh-huh. the Eagles. <laughs> and you know what would be dope? If you could create a team, put yourself. I would love to do this on Madden. And they used to have it. You could create a team. You could design your stadium. You could pick your name, design mm-hmm. your uniforms. But I would like to take it a step further. I want to pick. I want to create a team, but I want to replace my Broncos. You know what I'm saying? Put me in the AFC West. My rival will be the Chiefs and the Chargers and the Raiders. But I play that schedule. And I could go to the Super Bowl. I could be the reigning champs. I could... Man, what a smash idea. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> to be able to replace and make my own team in a division. Yeah. And like, I can say, yo, I, I you know, we, we yeah. replaced the Patriots. And now Patriots. I play in the AFC, you know, I play in the East. And Madden, look how easy it would be to do. All you got to do is just give me the same Patriots schedule. I just have a different team. Yeah. Let me design my stadium. Let again. me design everything. Pick a name. They did it in 2006. They've done it. Nobody wants to play this gridiron bullshit where it's like street ball. Or, Nobody or plays that or the yard or the 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 bullshit. Uh, what they have the bullshit. My career where you're the quarterback. Oh, the 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 home the, the journey the homecoming or, or some bullshit. bullshit. Now, if y'all really want to turn it up and add to the UI, it's gonna be a 500 gig download. But let motherfuckers do a uh a my career where you could be a D tackle and you get drafted and you can do drills and shit. And you got to get off this pass block to see when you're going to get drafted. And you go and play for the Titans. And then you can go on missions. And you can get a deal. Or oh, my thing is, Madden, come out with, like, the next level game. Say, you know what? Madden been the same because we've been working on And Look, y'all going to say Terrence is just saying it's because he got a meta quest. We've been working on Madden VR. And, look, I can literally hike. You know you've seen that. Mad- they already have yeah. a football game. But, I mean, hike. I can throw the ball and let it go. Or, look, if I'm a D lineman. I could be an offensive lineman and I could block. I could do hand things. There's so many ways they can take this shit to the next level. We what we seeing is plug talk. Yeah. They would have to, they would have to be willing to take a couple years off to get it done. This is the thing. Everybody, or do you think Madden and them are working from a personal level or are they just trying to make money? This is what I was trying to tell y'all about the young Miami thing. This is why products be good. And and mind you, y'all understand who I heard that com- that comment from. Quentin Tarantino, somebody whose product speaks for itself, and it's good because he gives a fuck about it. Because he gives a fuck about it. He's not it. just trying to make money. Fast and Furious uh, 10, they just trying to make money. They just trying to make money. Tyler Perry, just trying to make money at He's this point. He's a money point. guy. Hey, look, that's going to wrap it up for episode 156. Shout out to everybody tapping in. Did another two-hour clip for y'all. Even though we said we was going to do, we always said we're going to do a short pod this week. We're going to do a shorty. This nigga wants to start, you know. We get to wrap it on one topic and we get going. So, enjoy y'all weekend, man. Shout out to my boy AG. Long live. Appreciate the shirt, King. Shout out to the Bengals, too. We're going to see what y'all did this year. Nah, yeah, for sure. Y'all got, look, y'all got to say something because y'all talking a lot. <laughs> Everybody stay safe this weekend, man. 100. Oh, nah, really.